Welcome back to the People's Podcast. It's bad movies rule. And get ready, guys. Look out. The internet is coming. It's coming for us. Run for your lives. Do you guys think he practices that in advance? I think so. <laughs> I think he's standing in the mirror in the bathroom. Well, yeah. On accident, I practiced it in advance (laughs) because I wasn't rolling the first time we did it. I I totally anticipated this movie being terrible footage about the inside of your swim trunks. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the net. The net. Yeah. That's that's a a scary place. (laughs) Yikes. That's a place you don't want to hang out. There's some fungus here. You definitely don't want to hang out there. No, this is a movie about the internet. It's called The Net from 1995 starring Sandra Bullock. And I had remember, I remember, I don't know what you guys' experience was back in the 1900s with this, but I remember seeing lots of commercials. You for have it. no experience in the 1900s with <laughs> you this? You were alive in the not, 1900s. But not playing with the internet, right? Correct. At all? Okay. No. Yeah. No. More like toys. So yeah. we, uh, I remember seeing lots of commercials for it, never ever went and saw it, not once. So I was very aware of it. For the movie. That's it. Yes. For yeah. The movie. I but, thought you meant the internet itself. No. Yes. I had heard about the internet and right. I just <laughs> decided to try it this year. And I'm really excited about all the things it does. Yeah. Thanks for coming in, guys. I'm scared got about the things they could do to us. Clint Bush, the dirt farmer, in here. Uh, how you doing, buddy? Fantastic, man. I'm yeah. having a good time. I you got a new soda machine. What was the, when was the first time you had internet in your house? Do you remember? Oh, geez. We were definitely... Uh, it's got to be actual internet. We're yes. talking AOL, something we yes. dialed into and got the internet, yes. not like the bulletin board service stuff. I know we had it in, cl- in school for like... Yeah, no, we had it at home at about the same time. Okay. Uh, but we didn't have a dedicated line for it, so it was still like somebody would Get call. Our mom would phone. mom would just disconnect <laughs> you in the middle of downloading the picture Whatever. of stuff. <laughs> the, yeah. the 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 robo loading, people remember loading, from uh, loading. Yeah, sure, <laughs> sure. Machine. Uh, in the 1900s, did you have internet, Ryan? I had internet before I was born. How about so you've had internet your entire life? It's true. Oh my god, Ryan. What is that we like? We had a dedicated phone line. My dad was in IT, so oh my god, I had so much experience with computers before. Then he probably had a poster of the net up on the ceiling it's of his true. bedroom. I was like, oh, Sandra. I, uh, <laughs> I once, I once met your dad on the internet. Really? Yes, yeah. that's true. Actually, yeah, he no. doesn't talk to you. Yeah, anymore. he will not. Uh, he will not venture back out. I on think the when internet he called anymore. him daddy, it was too far. And right. Ryan's better half, Lauren Maddell, also joining us in the studio today. Welcome in, Lauren. Thanks. And uh, I, you are you guys are close in age, right? So you probably had the internet your entire life, also. Mm. Uh, it, we got it a little bit like after when this. Okay. Movie. Are you sure about that? <laughs> yeah. I had it in the night. I want to say ninety-seven. Like a couple yeah, of years sure. after this is probably like when I had like my senior year. I think is when we had it in my house, and it didn't look anything like what we saw in this movie no. at all. That is true. Not that at all. The websites in this movie look a lot more realistic. I think you got it. How do I kill the freaking notification? Just turn your thing off. Oh, this. There you oh, go. that's that. Okay. Um, the websites in this look a lot. They were like Web 2.0. Yeah, these are way cleaner. But yeah, uh, I would argue that this movie was supposed to be more futuristic, even though it wasn't really set. Futuristic. False. It was um, set in 1995. Shush. The the other thing is, <laughs> you were able to order pizza online at that point. You, 1994. No, you could not. 1994. If, you, if the finger gets any closer, you're going to lose it. Okay? <laughs> Just, you're <laughs> lucky it doesn't have any Cheeto dust on there. He'd have ate it already. In 1994, the first mm-hmm. online pizza order occurred. Yeah. In 1995, December 27th, yeah. the first airline uh, ticket was purchased. Okay, was it widely available? No. She no, but she's a, a hacker, bro. Available. There still has to be some kind of interface. Yeah, there was in 1994 oh, and in this 1995. Is gonna be, this is going to be fun. All right. Look, we are going to get straight into this. For, thank you, you don't for know, joining man. You us. weren't there. So I'm, I'm oh. really glad this is my second time on Good Movies Rule. So this thank is, you for that. Oh, gosh. You said that last <laughs> time. The uh, the movie <laughs> was directed by Erwin Winkler. Erwin Winkler, who is known more as a producer, produced Hen- lots Henry, of movies. Henry no, um, I don't know. I, 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 I honestly know, don't I know. I about that, too. Could I be. mean... Not super fit, you know. No, comedy. he was a producer of the original Rocky movie, but he didn't direct very many films. Only like four or five, and none of which you probably would know. The movie was written by John Brancato and Michael Ferris. This is the same writing duo. Two episodes in a row, not on purpose at all. We did Terminator Salvation last week, and the same two guys that wrote Terminator Salvation wrote The Net here this week. We're a just, lot of parallels. Let's just keep running with yeah, all a lot the of similarities. Yeah, in these big two time, movies. Big time. Uh, movie starred, as I said, Sandra Bullock, Jeremy Northam, and Dennis Miller. 
of Saturday Night Live acclaim, and at this point, I'm probably still a radio host at least. Um, budget of this movie was $22 million, and it did great at the box office. It had a box office of $110 million worldwide. It's a quadruple, more than quadruple yeah. its budget at the box office. But the ratings are mid. It's a 6.0 on IMDb, right on kind of on our line, right? Yep. 44% critic score and in lockstep a 44% audience score. Exactly the same. I don't know if we've ever seen that before. That's kind of weird. Yeah. To have to have the critics in the audience basically say, yep, handshake, I mean, the, we agree. The critics are idiots, <laughs> so I'd expect them to have a low rating, but not all come the on, time. audience. I mean, this all in this time. case. I, I think, think you're a critic. I, Are you I'm critic? not a critic. Are you a critic? I'm just a person. Or, you seem like a critic. I'm just a guy. You came in here all salty so. because I, I, I let the... I couldn't sleep last night. I let it night. slip this I weekend. I couldn't sleep last night. I let He's another slip. one of these guys that says, hey, just because the name of the show is Bad Movies Rule, if you put my movie on there, F you. <laughs> no. <laughs> he, this exactly is the guy. Doing. No. I know. He's... This weekend, I let it slip that I thought this movie was garbage, okay? And he but, came in here with with steam coming out I, of his ears. I that was before sleep. you watched it, right, Jay? No, it was it was it was after I watched it. After, so you thought it was garbage after you watched yes. it? Yes. So, wow. So you're competent in judging things, then. <laughs> Get out of here! With you. All right. <laughs> oh and my these goodness! Two, and apparently, your mother-in-law or your mother, my mom, yeah. your mother-in-law, yeah. watched it with you. And she also was like, "What is James talking about?" It's a good movie. Man. Sorry, p- listeners. <laughs> no, it's no. Let's, boy, let's, let's just everybody. lay it all out, all our cards on let's the table. It. It's a so good that we movie. We can have this discussion, and maybe by the end you'll come to your senses. No, and have a different. This rating. movie has you on the edge of your seat. Yes, waiting what? to get up and go get a snack. What? No, definitely not. <laughs> what? Stop. Ryan and I are over there crushing on the same person. What? Uh, what? what? What was, was his that name? Mean? <laughs> he was pretty smoking hot, right? What are you talking about? <laughs> I can't wait to find out about this. That's called All right. uh, what That's a tease. Know, called tease, yeah. yeah James like knows Sandra these Bullock. terms because he's a critic. So the uh, <laughs> for those of you who are joining us, I want to say thanks for listening. If you want to get in touch with the show, there's all kinds of ways you can do that. We have regular mailbag episodes, and there's two ways you can be featured on the show. You can email us at thisshowistrash at gmail.com and write us about anything. Our takes, why why on earth Ryan likes this movie, you want to take him to task on it, go for it. You want to get you want to get on Lauren's back for you know having a terrible opinion about uh, the teenage movie. Ninja Turtles, now is your chance because now she's here. All right. She said that movie was garbage. Yes. Uh, you wow. can email us about anything you want and we'll talk about it on our mailbag. The second way now to be on our mailbag is you can call the show and leave us a, boi- a voicemail. That's right. We have our very own BMR hotline where you can reach out and we'll play your voice on our mailbag and answer you directly. And that number is 262 757 Eight five six seven. So give us a call, and we might hear your own voice coming back at you. I want a thing. This is not to do with this movie or anything like that. Back in the day, when your phone was attached to the wall, when it was a physical thing. So before cordless phones and everything, yeah. you used to be able to get angry and hang up on people. <laughs> if you have the ability to call us and yeah. give us your best angry hang up. Be it a line, anything, the whole. Yeah. Thing. I want to hear them because I think that would be fantastic. Please, it's been we're, a long time. We're ready. To, well, we're ready <laughs> for the smoke. Please, <laughs> we accept it all. So, all right. there is one other thing they can do. What else can they do? Oh yeah, please. They can this send is your us thing. physical mail. Send us physical mail. We've had we've had listeners over the last year or so. I add to our stuff we've got here decorating our studio. So feel free to do that as well. Bad movies rule. PO Box three eight three. Burlington, Wisconsin, 53105. Ryan will be very happy if he gets to open some mail. Because I generally just open it before he gets here. And he hasn't gotten open a single piece of mail, I don't think. Because you're a dick. (laughs) Yep, that's fair. (laughs) And if you think that now, it's not going to be any different by the time we get to the end of this garbage heap. Let's get going. (laughs) Can we get into this? Let's get into it. I'm really curious to see how you you frame this movie. It's... Oh, the movie frames itself. The internet. It <laughs> it's 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 Sandra Bullock running around. It, it, uh, what? You know, that, that's literally I, what it is. That was like I don't think that was one of her lines. No, it wasn't. No, 
here's the thing. The way that this movie and its thrills, I'm putting that in air quotes, okay? Wow. And the way technology is depicted is about as exciting as watching your grandmother program a VCR. Do you want to okay? know why you it's thought It's like, that? it's appealing, or maybe it's endearing to watch your grandparent do that, but it's certainly not exciting, right? But do you want to know why you thought that? Why did I think? My you're going to tell me why I think My that. theory? <laughs> yes, tell me why not, I'm thinking. I think they went too technical with it. Oh, no. come on. <laughs> uh, too technical. <laughs> Mozart's ghost. <laughs> well, that was obviously well, just Let's click whatever. this button and I've hacked into the government. Well, it was, well that was an accident. They were trying technical. to figure out why Yeah, that there was, was a bug in the code. Oh, my gosh. Let's just start with this. All right, here's how the movie starts. We're, we're, we're going to get into this. Can okay. we? Yes, Please. I want to. Scene one. Scene one. Senator. Action. There's a senator guy. No, he's not a senator. He's the undersecretary of something important. He's in Washington, and he's on a phone call. Walker tells me I have AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. I, I love how his assistant comes up while he's on the phone, and he's standing there. And he's like, sir, your car. Like, oh, I saw you drive up. Get out and walk up to me. You, oh, the car. The car. Yeah, my, right. My bad. I forgot. He's on the phone. Use those. Is this a mistake? You know, we don't know what he's being told. Right. Yet. And the guy on the other line's like, meh, 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 meh. no, which he's he's finding out you have AIDS, right? Right. The internet, the internet called and said you have AIDS, and he's like, oh no, that sucks. Take me to the park, Eddie, which is his driver. Okay, uh, where would where would a nice be? Where would be a nice place for me to kill myself? No, like, no, no, uh, <laughs> not to kill himself. Where's a nice place for him to go and clear his head? <laughs> that's, that's literally what he says. Yes, he clears his and that's he literally clears his head. He did. He did. He but goes, he ate the apple first. He goes. He sits down. Why? And keep well, the doctor away. Duh. Before that, <laughs> they're not going to res me. <laughs> <laughs> he calls his son. Okay, who's He's getting like, in trouble? Brokers a final deal between his son and his Nintendo and Sega and his Listen, mother and all that. You put in one good hour in school, and you can have two hours in Sega Land. Sega and Nintendo. Like, yeah. What's it like to be rich? Yeah. And then he's like, "And I'm going to stop and get some milk on the way home." <laughs> He's like, well, now that I've solved that big problem, I can rest in peace. I, you know, that's it. That's the last time he's going to talk to his son and his wife. And then he blows his own brains out. That's the beginning of this movie. Fantastic. After after eating an apple. Like, you're telling me you don't have a flask. Like, an apple. That's what you're going to have. Right. Like, that's your your last thing. It's like, man, I love apples. I'll tell you what. Have you ever seen me looking depressed out in a park with a bucket of Popeye's chicken? Somebody come tackle me because it's not going to be good. (laughs) No, James. James, no. I'm not going out just eating an apple as my last meal. Have you ever seen James watching the net? (laughs) (laughs) With a bucket of Popeye's chicken. Yeah. It's good. It's not good. This episode brought to you by Popeyes. I wish it was brought to us by Popeyes. It's my favorite. All right. Now we get to meet Angela Bennett. So it's this setup that we not really, it doesn't really get explained until later, but we meet Angela Bennett. And if you forget her name, don't worry. They're going to tell you a thousand more times before the movie's over that her name is Angela Bennett. And she'll tell you that a hundred times. It's Marks, wasn't it? No, that's her. That's her new name. My name is Angela Bennett. I'm Angela Bennett. Angela Bennett. And she's a, uh, uh, well, you could probably explain it, Mr. Smarty Pants. She's a beta tester. They, when we first see her, she's debugging yeah. Wolfenstein 3D. Yeah, she basically debugs video games and other programs. Yeah. Right. So she's supposedly on the phone with the creator of Wolfenstein who's trying to riz her up. Which was what, ID software? Right? I, yeah, it was id software. You know, he's like, oh, thanks for debugging my game. There was this nasty virus in it. And she's like, it's okay. Just, just don't hit escape. Long You're fine. Don't hit escape. It's good. And she fixes it through some computer mumbo jumbo, puts the virus on a different disc, sticks it in a FedEx. She's going to send it to her friend Dale, who works at the company with her. He collects them for fun. She, right. she must have the software that she's written for herself that just extracts viruses. It's like, right. here, the software is fine if we just extract the virus <laughs> right. real quick and put it on this disc. It's fine. The way now. this movie is, I fully expected her to get rid of a virus by putting it in the waste bin and hitting empty recycle bin. That would, <laughs> that's that's what I, <laughs> virus.exe drag and drop <laughs> that's what i was expecting to happen that was about the level at which this opening scene put faith in me how it was going to be all like you actually said, go it's through probably the, too technical for you <laughs> you actually go through the extra effort and delete your waste bin i just put yeah. it all in there and let it sit there for a so hundred years i i gained no space by deleting stuff because i put it in the waste bin and it just sits there taking you're that the guy space. every time you turn on your computer it's like you have 12 updates no, it's been 12 years. <laughs> you turn your computer off? 
He's on I Windows never turned it on. I never turned it off, so it's just right. it's still going. You're still rolling with XP yeah. back at the crib? Oh, dude, if I could get away with running Windows XP still, I would. Yeah. I do have one laptop still on Windows XP. The totally XP different was awesome. real solid, though. Oh, I yeah. loved XP. I yeah, use it I'm just sure. for tuning the full-size cars. It's so, good stuff. Because it doesn't make mistakes. All right, this is when she orders pizza, which I'm not even going to give crap because you're going to start a whole fight about this. Okay, so okay. wait, whoa, okay. Go so ahead. you let Rob Get King in his face. spend the whole episode of Last Starfire, which is a trash can of a movie. Wow. <laughs> go I had a flip flop. Tra- there's, there's, oh, it's down there. Sorry. A trash but, can. Don't just take another opportunity to take a shot at Last no, Starfire. But my point Give is, your point about you allowed him to be able to say what he wanted, but now you're going to just shut me down. Go ahead. I thought you already said you can order pizza. It was no, the thing. I already said what I was going to say. That's, I know. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> she orders pizza on a definitely real looking website. Uh, she, here's my first problem with it. We're supposed to believe that Sandra Bullock is a shut in recluse of an internet nerd who can't ever date or find anybody okay. to go out with her. That's fair. Yes. That's a fair criticism. You're, you're, <laughs> yeah, it is. True story. Okay. She's she's too smoking hot for the position she's doing, and they even allude to it later. Right. Right. Okay. She has no friends. None. Yeah. Okay. Not even Janice across the street table to identify. She I'm pretty sure out. Janice would be like, yeah, I know who she is. I, I've seen her. Nobody. Literally, it comes down later to the, in, in the movie to have someone identify her, and she knows nobody the well, therapist that tried to hook up it. with her yeah but that's outside of him that's it not even her neighbor across the street could tell who she's she was. an introvert yeah, I mean that was like an old lady who knows <sighs> okay fine she had poor eyesight yeah she has no boyfriend she spends time on her chat room with cyber bob with the best text-to-speech thing i've ever seen from that was pretty time. impressive <laughs> that, that's amazing for the time yeah <laughs> the time it has different voices and inflections and everything. <laughs> it's it's like, impressive. Siri can't even do impressive that. Impressive or non-existent. Which one? Why does it matter? Ghost of the Machine, you didn't have a problem with it. I ripped that movie to shreds. <laughs> you were drooling over that movie. Was, <laughs> I killed that movie. Sure. I killed sure. that movie. The no, the Texas speech is obviously yeah. not real. She's in there talking about, and all these guys are trying to riz her up with it. I want to be your boyfriend, Angela. Like what are you looking say, for, Angela? Man. You're one of us. <laughs> one, of one, us. Of one of us. One of us. I told yeah. me my wife and I actually sat there. One of us. One <laughs> of us. <laughs> she basically says this. She goes, "Wait, I have it here." She goes, "I want somebody that's butch, beautiful, and brilliant." And immediately I was like. Hello, yes, I'm here. Looks like you want me <laughs> to come and be your boyfriend. Like that, she had described Arnold. Did you order me from she Arnold.com? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. I was like, she just wants Schwarzenegger to roll yeah. in. She, she got a damn close second. That's right. I mean, he wasn't schwarzenegger but. <laughs> no, I guess not. Wait, are you talking about Jack? That he wasn't much. Dude was amazing. He he's hold- way more beautiful than me. He would. He's not- I'm not gay or anything. Uh, no. All right, this is the thing. I'm just saying, dude. But this is a good looking dude for a computer hacker, virusy type dude. Also, he was too good looking to be a hacker for sure. Yeah, because he's like, don't, look at us, aren't we pathetic? Don't yeah. breathe out his name in the same sentence as Arnold. Okay, Arnold. It, this guy couldn't hold Arnold's jock strap. All right, that's that's the difference between the two of them. Wow, that's an image. This guy. It is. All right. He couldn't hold it because you've got them all under your bed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a little joke he likes to tell. <laughs> That's not that true, guys. True, actually. That's a, that, <laughs> that was um, true, actually. Uh, all right. Don't we check also, his eBay history. We also, a very important <laughs> plot point, we find out that her mother has Alzheimer's. Oh, that's sad. That is. Um, she's in a home. She visits her. Doesn't know who she is. All she wants to do is just keep bringing me more candy. Um, and it... Turns out for her to be super inconvenient later on. Absolutely. That her mother has Alzheimer's. It's the worst. It's the worst. Thanks, Mom. Right. Dale, now here's where the plot starts to pick up. At least with the plot that we're going to be following the rest of the movie. Dale, her, what's the name of the company she works for? I don't remember. Uh, 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 not Citadel. It's like... Um, something. Fake Intersoft. Fake Intersoft. It's... Uh, <laughs> Inner Cathedral. Trode. Cathedral. <laughs> Cathedral. Yeah, no. Cathedral it was. Yeah. Anal probe. Cathedral. All right, so she's working at Cathedral. Dale. <laughs> <laughs> what? Was it Cathedral? Yes. yes. Yeah. Dale. Yeah, it was definitely Cathedral and not anal probe. Right. Thank oh, you, Inner Ryan. Trode. Oh, he was going to catch it in post. Inner Trode. <laughs> you hope. Um, all right, so anyway, Dale sends her, who they've never met, they've only talked over the phone, sends her this 
disc called Mozart's Ghost. How did she interview? She she works remotely. She's way, way ahead of everybody else. She works from home, never been to the office. No one at the office knows who she is. She's already had COVID. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes. Yeah. Dale, because because Dale's like, hey, we got to figure out this Mozart's Ghost thing. You know, it's this, what is it? It was a band website or a game? I don't even game? know. Mozart's Ghost. And the it internet's just... hottest new band. Okay. <laughs> the, you know what's accurate about that? Program? That was Mozart's, Mozart's Ghost. Ghost. <laughs> you know what's accurate about that, though? Yeah. Is the music playing nonstop? Because yeah, right. that is how the internet worked before we all invent, like figured out our mute but buttons. I mean, <laughs> Remember MySpace? You go on someone's MySpace page and it's That's like. Right. Nah, nah. <laughs> I nope. wish I remembered what songs I, I I had songs ripping on my yeah. page, dude. I think my ripping. postal jeep is still for sale on MySpace. If you find <laughs> me and Tom are buddies out there talking about it. Love it, love it. Yeah, so he, he he's got a problem with it. He sends it to her. He sees on his computer that it was delivered three minutes ago. She's like, he's like, what took you so long? He she pops it in and she's like, what's the issue? And you click down. There was a little pie symbol. Yeah, down and I was like, corner. sweet, it's gonna deliver pie like pizza. <laughs> no, nope. It ends up just a bunch of gobbledygook start coming up in words and numbers and it looked like the Matrix and you know all kinds of crazy and it starts. Yeah, happening. and she kind of is. No selling it, right? She's like, "Yeah, what's the big deal?" You know, she's like, "Well, it's just, you just got it going to a different internet, I internet number, which sure. isn't a thing." But no. <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> and Dale's like, "No, you don't understand. I have access to systems that I shouldn't have access to." Yeah, right. I can like, get into Pizza Hut. <laughs> <laughs> I saw somebody book a flight and order pizza today, and she's like, <laughs> "Who was that?" That's crazy. No one does that <laughs> no one on the does internet. That. Wasn't me. Uh, she wants to go on vacation. She's supposed to go to... Uh, she hasn't had a vacation the, in six years. Yucatan. Going to Mexico or wherever. Yeah, Yucatan, Mexico. And so he's like, it's okay. Uh, you can still catch your flight. I'll fly in in my Cessna in the morning. And, you know, we've had five hours before you have to leave. And we'll we'll do it. She's this like, is how right. I know how early this is. Because, like, five hours before your flight leaves. Right. You, you, she doesn't have to be there three hours early. Uh, nothing. Dude, yeah. You used to just be able to stroll in to with the your airport. cigarette. Oh, the flight's <laughs> right in five up to minutes. the gate, dude. <laughs> right like legit. <laughs> right, you pull your car up next to the plane. Yeah, hey, they'll yeah. wheel Somebody the stairs over. They'll wheel the stairs over to get you in there, dude. That's how it used to be. No, so he's flying his Cessna, but but guys shouldn't have met. The internet hacked his plane. Okay, the internet's pissed off. You should have messed with them. Is and that what happened? Yes, yes, the internet hacked his plane. They they messed with his uh, sensors somehow. You think he just flew into a smokestack because no, he's an idiot? I just if this is a large organization, right? The internet is the largest no, organization. No, it's not the internet. It is the the, the, the pay- movie's called the net. No, no but, it, but what was the name of the group? They're utilizing the net. Yeah, uh, uh, it was the internet, Lauren. Yeah. Uh, thank you. I can see that. All right. It the internet, internet hacked no, his there's, airplane there's and hackers, crashed him into a smokestack. There's step. hackers that are utilizing the internet. Right. It was the internet. But I'm saying this is a large organization based on what we find out. Uh-huh. Because they own one of the largest or the largest protection, like antivirus, essentially. Right. In it was the world. Norton. This was no. a... Yeah. Th- yeah. Cause, this was cause basically... <laughs> This is basically putting Norton on blast right off the bat. <laughs> but, it's called Gateway, this thing. So there's yeah. so they, they could have like sent someone in to fix the plane though. They like, hacked his plane. It's the even, internet. Yeah. He's up there flying like no problem. All of a sudden, freaking computer virus shoots into his, his uh onboard they don't show computer. That. Nope. That's it not a all thing. Gets all you're messed making, up. You're making not stuff that's, up. No. You're making this movie up. made up stuff. You're taking <laughs> a lot of liberties here, you're, James. You're adding things to the movie. Well, I'm not that adding things. That actually movies. would have made it better. Um, it would have made so, it better. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Yeah, no, basically, somebody messed with his systems because he's right. supposedly coming in for a landing, yeah. but nowhere near the airport. This guy's poking yeah. around on the internet. Internet's pissed off. They uploaded the, the wrong software to his Garmin. He, cl- he crashed into a smokestack. Dale's dead. Now, back at Angela, she's getting ready to go on her vacation by herself. Okay. What a loser. First of all, how many freaking computers does one person need? When they showed that opening shot in the movie coming in her skylight, you could see, hold on, I'll, you guys <laughs> both hiding their faces. I mean, I thought the same thing. Do could, not come be- to my house just and from count the, my computers. Just from the skylight, you could see three computer monitors, keyboards, and, and PCs. That's there's, in the attic. Do you want to know how many three I computer have? monitors is attached to my computer. Okay. Hold one on. computer. Hold on. There's three computer setups, not just monitors, the whole setups. Do you want to know how many I have? Then 
in this scene, I'm gonna give you a chance in a second. When she's in the the living room or the top, the bottom floor getting ready, we see three more computers in that room. So in just two rooms that we haven't seen the rest of the house, there's six of them. Not six of them in 2023, six of them in 1994. How many computers can she can't even operate more than one at a time? We we had well, three in 94, five, six oh, Clint. in the house. Yeah, we had at least three. Okay, she has six I in have two like rooms. 12, though, but that right was now. for one person. <laughs> So. You do not have 12 computers. Yeah, he does. Why? What on earth do you need 12 computers for in case the internet attacks? Yeah. I How have... do you think I keep the net away? <laughs> I was going to say, I've got seven plus four I'm at the shop. still looking for Sandra Bullock, okay? <laughs> That's ridiculous. You're still trying to hunt her down. Where are you? She's going really fast in a bus by this time. <laughs> she gets, Ooh. I mean, it's obviously at this point the internet's on her. She gets to the airport and the internet has hacked the airport yes. now. All right. Well, there's a also, big services down in general, right, yeah. all over the country at that yes. point. Do today. they put on the screen hijacked if a plane's hijacked? That seems <laughs> like the wrong message oh, to send. This is before 9-11. It was like delayed, canceled, hijacked. Yeah, that you're just right. seemed like... It wasn't the same message are we gonna like say from that, 9-11, though? No, that, you're right. That, that was like the uh, the uh, settings on the washing machine from Ghost of the Machine on the dishwasher. Like, Super yeah. kill. Imagine the guy just sitting there at the airport drinking his coffee. He's like, oh, a lot of hijackings today. I uh, told you you shouldn't have gone on flight 50-50. Air traffic control Gosh. was like, oh, I guess you guys got hijacked. That sucks. <laughs> that sucks. She does, eventually, the internet, you know, is fixed. And they rebooted the They modem. rebooted it. And every single plane is on time, right? <laughs> Did yeah. There was no delays There was from no that. delays from all of that shutdown. So right. But, just, they're, they're but all on time. the internet is just following her and hacking her. I don't want to be insensitive, but the internet might have hacked her mom too. I mean, her brain stopped working. <laughs> okay, that's all I'm saying. I don't know. I don't know how far their reach is. Well, if you think all about right? it, why can't she remember anything? The brain is its own internet. That's what I'm sorts. saying. That's what I'm saying. I wouldn't put it past them. They just gave her a lot of lead chips. Um, we're in the Yucatan now, sure. and she's chilling on the beach. Uh, Angela Angela Bennett. I almost called her Angela Bassett. That's an actress that's not in this movie. Angela Bennett's chilling on a lounge chair with her laptop. Yep. Not her book, like she said she was going to bring. That's right. Well, she does throw her book in the sand like a freaking psychopath. Who puts a book in sand? Yeah. What? James doesn't even care. He's like, I've never read a book. It's a book. Who cares? <laughs> you can set them down anywhere. Like, do you? If you want to stand up on that hill and shout, I'd give you a little platform You want to know what a book that? is for? Know. You take a book, you set it down so you can put your sandwich somewhere no. so it's not on the sand. <laughs> Jeez, we <laughs> <laughs> use books as coasters. That's their purpose. <laughs> and while she's on this beach, there's a guy kind of just a little bit down the beach, and he orders his favorite drink. Do you know mm. what a Gibson is? Suspicious. Does he work for the internet? We don't know yet. He might. He comes over and starts to riz up Angela. So I hear you like small olives in your martinis. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> Yeah, and he knows her, and they knows her favorite movie. Or she's not suspicious at all. I wanted to be the cat. I went to bed in no. breakfast. I gotta be Tiffany's. honest. You I'm, wouldn't have been I'm suspicious. Weirdo. I'm like so gullible. <laughs> it's terrible. Fell for like, this guy. No, this guy's. How do you awesome. think I got her to date me? <laughs> <laughs> the internet. The internet. <laughs> Oh, this guy seemed like a doofus to me, though, guys. I mean, I really? know he's all yeah, he's all charm and stuff, but I, you know, I think. I was like, following right along. I fell in love with him. So you thought he was a doofus, or you thought that he was just like when she said uh, computers are the perfect hiding place. I want. I thought he was going to be like, well, I hide in computer boxes, but yeah, it's pretty much the same thing, right? You know, like, I the think problem, that's just you. Like <laughs> the problem is, like, is uh, I happen to know how competitive James is, and he's like, I could have done way better. That's what it picking is. Her up. <laughs> James is like, this guy's not even funny. I don't he's, get it. this guy sucks. Why? This guy doesn't is, have to be funny. How's he going to pick this chick? How does she like him? I don't understand it at all. Well, he's got his good looks he's not even funny he's not even, and, an accent. and she said she wanted somebody butch and he's and definitely like, not that and he's butch. like not at all no she's like i'm a beta tester and he should have been like well i'm a beta male so this works out perfectly do you, you want to know, know the two of us. <laughs> do you want to know why it works so well why? It's because he didn't bring anything to the table that she said she wanted and so he's like this is what the woman says she wants mm. so i'm gonna do the opposite because that's actually what right. she wants because ultimately no, she, because that's what he actually is <laughs> He somehow, I don't know if he was in that chat room or whatever, but he saw where she laid out because he's inside the internet. He knows all those things. It's called hacking, this. bro. That's what I'm saying, dude. The internet knows everything, bro. And he works for the internet. No. Um, it's, it's the company. You're really upset that this wasn't like 
as closely tied to the net as it possibly could be. Well, why should it have been? Because no. it's called the net! <laughs> <laughs> They're using the internet for all of this, though. A That's whirlwind. the whole point. A whirlwind. When the whole world right has is oh all integrated to the internet, uh -huh. then all of this is possible. That's uh -huh. the point of the movie. That is the entire point of the movie. Is that hey, I know the internet's been chasing this her point, through this whole thing. That's what we're trying to get to. But they're just trying to say that at this point in the 90s, and that's the only thing this movie had going for it. I'm going to skip ahead again to where I think that this movie was very on the screen. Um, like That's all it had. It literally existed. It wasn't bad. It wasn't wow. good. Remember that part when it was on the screen? It wasn't bad. Yeah. It wasn't good. The only thing it had going for it is yeah. if we were sitting there in 95 and didn't realize that this stuff could maybe happen. All it's, your information is out there. We know that now. It, it means nothing now. It means nothing now, but at the time, that, right. that was a big deal. But that's it's what I'm not, saying. All right, we'll get... I've got thoughts on that. You're but telling me in I, 1995, if you would have seen this, you'd have been like, this is total... I already knew this is a thing. No, but it's not nearly as bad as they make it out to be. If this was Isn't on in 1995, though? in 1995 and 47 minutes, James's house would have had a computer and he'd ordered a pizza on it. <laughs> That's True. fair. <laughs> All right. A whirlwind a whirlwind date ensues, or he's sweeping her off on boats and yachts and uh, That's dinner, sketchy. dinners. I don't and... know. It would work. Why would a woman... <laughs> You're telling me you'd go out on a boat with a guy you've never met? Yeah. One on one. You're gonna get raped. It was a nice boat. Whoa. That's what would happen Whoa. if you go on a boat with a guy you don't know. Well, this is this is about murder, not rape. Okay. <laughs> yes. That that's about what's gonna happen though if you go on a boat with a guy you don't know. I'm All just right. saying. While they're w having a romantic walk up the beach, a staged mugging happens where this guy runs up, grabs her purse, and Jack, who is this mysterious man who works for the internet, uh, it, it like pretends like, oh no, I'm gonna chase after him and be Captain America, which is one of the things she said she wanted. And they both end up in the bushes where they're both rifling through her bag to be like, is it in there? Is it in they're there? Trying to there? find the disc, right? The disc that had the, the Mozart's virus. ghost thing on it, right? But he's not even he's not successful for her. What do you mean? So he's supposed to be like Captain America, but he sucks at doing that if he's right. supposed to. Because he comes back empty handed. Yeah. Well, cut handed. Right. So they find the disc. He shoots the the the, the midget midget Houdini. Their words, not mine. He's actually a shark. Literally what they call him. Okay. And kills the guy, comes back, cuts his own hand open to make it look like there was some kind of a struggle with the dull side of the knife, by the way. If you paid attention to that, that was interesting. Dull side to his hand, up, oh, cuts it open comes back out, oh, man, I'm sorry. I wasn't able to get your purse. She lost her ID, her credit cards, her passport, everything. And then he's also now got the disc on him that they were there to get. So the only thing that Jack has to do now is get rid of Angela. That's the right. last thing. Right, and he sucks as a guy because she's out there freezing, and he's like, oh, look, it like, looked like his napkin from dinner. Like, let me put that around your waist. Like, Instead of giving him the coat. Give her his coat. Like, right. I was that's like, well, he had his gun like, in his well, coat. that would have so ended why. right there. Right. right. But, that's, <laughs> like, but that's the it. reason why is because he had a gun in his coat. She even looked down at it at one point. She was, like, was, okay. was kind of like, that was kind of weird. But it didn't even matter. So first of all, they're like, She's like, here, I'll bandage you up, and they they get to take the boat out to get a band aid. Like they're now they're forty feet from. They're shore. actually on the on the boat. My band aids. We're gonna have to drive forty miles <laughs> to get it. She's bandaging him up, and he goes down and he's like, I'm just gonna go under deck for a while. Puts the disc in the drawer, gets his gun, puts a new clip in, like he's gonna do the deed, right? Puts it back in his inside pocket of his jacket. But when he gets back onto the deck, she seduces him, or she's the one that starts putting brown the, the moves brown on, cow. right? And she's like, "Hold on, I'm 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 hitting the gas here," and he, who was just gonna, I think, go up there and kill her, and had He's no like, intentions oh, of sleeping with her. I got 15 minutes. It's like, all right, <laughs> <laughs> are we doing this? I mean, joke, but yeah, that's pretty much probably yeah. what he did, right? Yeah. Okay, fine. But yeah, if she me. had, think about this. <laughs> as kind of like, why well, it's the first date, and you just met this guy, and what are you doing? It saved her life. If she doesn't do that. She probably just gets shot and killed right yeah. there. Ultimately, guys, listening, this is a PSA, okay? <laughs> just do it. <laughs> Nike was right the whole time. <laughs> okay. In this case, it saved her life. But here's where the whole thing falls apart. After they have sex, and she, he goes back down again, and she puts his jacket on and realizes there's a gun inside, feels the gun. Now when he comes back up, she's got it in his lap. She's like, what's this for? The problem with that is, is at least three different times on the beach and early in that she's inside his jacket hugging him and embracing him. Because you said that and I didn't see that. Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't yeah. think so. 
Come on, this is, it's easy I'll, for I'll you to say I don't think so when I don't have the movie here to show you. But I guarantee you, interesting, she was hugging him around mm. his jacket and with from within inside his jacket. Interesting. You're gonna tell me that at no point she didn't feel this gun that was inside, she just, but she puts it on and now you know she, it, it could have been his garage door opener. She yeah, just, she wasn't just happy to see him. There was yeah. a nine millimeter in his pocket. So is that nine millimeter? You're happy to see me? Yeah, <sighs> that's what it was. She was confused. Wow. No, it could have been a hard drive. <laughs> Maybe a floppy disk. I thought you were going somewhere totally different. <laughs> It's up in his chest. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Maybe it's a tumor. It's, it's not, not a tumor. A tumor. <laughs> it's not a tumor at all. <laughs> well, yeah, Sorry. that's a good point, James. Congratulations. You broke the entire movie by calling out this one flaw. What's fun? I've only, I'm only just started. That's about seven flaws. Keep count, okay? <laughs> There's. If only we had a counter. Well, it's already Darn four it. from some other episode. We never reset it. But regardless. What's funny about this is she that has upsets the gun. That you that much, though? She, yes, it's just it's, one thing out of many that's stupid. Hmm. Uh, you know, have the gun have the gun in the boat. Like, what he had it on him the whole time. But that gives us it. the reason to say, yeah. like, hey, you certainly seem to know your ordinance. She so says, she knows guns. Well, the first thing she says is, what's this for? And I, before he even said I said fishing as a joke, and then he goes, fishing. I'm Sharks, like, oh, yeah. This guy's right. the genius. Because I was kidding. And... He kind of is trying to talk his way out of it, but ultimately, he's like, "Look, he he outs himself. He's like, you wanted Butch and Brilliant. He starts yelling at her. Right? I am all these things you said you wanted. The cross between uh, uh, Captain America and Albert Schweitzer, and you know, I, it basically this whole thing's been fake. She had given him the gun back, right? Already, right. he starts getting a little brazen with her and stuff like that. And this, he goes to pull the trigger. No bullets in the gun. So she yeah. unloaded the thing. She pulled the clip. Yeah. She puts the cigarette out because she had quit smoking her brand of cigarettes, puts the cigarette out in its face. Oh. And then smashes him with the uh, 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 fire Wine, extinguisher. Uh, sham- shampoo bottle. Or, you know oh, champagne bottle. Champagne right. bottle. And you know what Jack didn't have the rest of the movie? A, a mark on his face, face from a freaking burnt cigarette eyeball. Burnt. Nothing like that. But Not a long, mark. How long on was him. she in the hospital? Days. Three days. A week. No, it was, it was a week three, later. Yeah, week, three days yeah. or something. It was three days, they yeah. said. Hmm. Three days. That's good point. Nothing. Okay. Wow. Congratulations, James. You yeah. broke the entire movie. I again. Did, again. If you're going to be all smug and pithy every time I bring up, just keep <laughs> track. Because you're like, oh, you broke the movie after every little thing I say. <laughs> you're going to have to say that about 100 more times, and you're going to be the one that sounds we'll like a fool. We'll see. So, <laughs> we, uh, yeah, so he's, she, he's been knocked yeah. out by the champagne bottle at this point right and she goes up and she starts mashing buttons trying to start the boat on the boat on the cb right well like, it didn't have an internet connection she didn't want to use it that's why you're right <laughs> I, I also like that too it's like hey we better call this in let's go uh we got to go out farther so the ship to shore radio will work what that didn't make sense <laughs> go farther away so that it'll work yeah but she's like okay yeah, she's she just she's just thinking about getting it on. She at doesn't that point. know radio. She only knows internet stuff, and she doesn't know yet that the internet's out here trying to kill her. So she ultimately there's like a, they've been dragging this little raft boat, a dinghy, a dinghy behind them, with a you know a little pull start motor on it, and so she tries to get away on that thing, but unfortunately the engine's a Nissan, so it just you know. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> if it was electric, it would have worked. <laughs> I'm like, could you pull it faster? She's like, boop, 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 boop. you know, I'm not even giving it full pulls. And I'm you gotta like, choke it. I'm like, calm down and give it a full pull. Finally, the thing goes just as he's about to get on it. She leaves him in the dust, but ends up crashing the thing into a freaking rock. Like, I there must be some time loss here between he jumps trying to get into the thing. She smashes him into the bottom of the boat, which that's fine. I get that. Yeah. So he might be again a little dazed or whatever. Yeah. But she starts to speed away and without being able to see all of a sudden because the bright moonlit night is all of the sudden dark and she crashes it into a rock. Yeah. I don't understand how she's got enough space now to where he didn't find her in some fisherman. This does. is a, this is one of the biggest things so in the whole movie. There's like just a space time difference that like okay. it, it doesn't exist, and then it exists right. immediately. But then they're exactly where they need to be again six minutes later. Right. This is the problem, Mister. I broke the movie. Is that she gets <laughs> she gets thirty feet away from this guy and crashes, and she spends three days in a hospital. And nobody from the internet is there to try and kill her. 
In fact, this whole, why go through this whole wild goose chase, this whole cat and mouse thing, when it would have just been so much easier than having to hack her identity and all the stuff we're about to get into, when they could have just killed her while she was in the hospital. Because then there's not much movie left. Well, I, I know, but I'm just talking about, it, yes. it makes them look stupid. Right. right like, you wouldn't you know, check the hospitals. Or the hospitals, or the fact that she crashed well, 30 they, feet away from you. They had to have known this, because they go through the works to falsify her paperwork so they know she's still there to get her back to where she needs to be so they're they're moving her on she's a pawn at this point right. now they're moving her along to finish something else up there's no reason for the song and dance right just kill her well so if they did you was that a legitimate question or you just want to keep going no no go ahead okay well so it's possible that it wasn't just 30 feet and that was just they shot poor film time jump yeah, yeah. it right? could have been poor filmmaking at sure. that point um also it's possible they just couldn't find her in that since she was a Jane Doe. They suck, I guess. But it is Mexico too. They probably hadn't updated. They don't. They're not on have the internet. internet in the hotel. Right. In the hospitals. So that's probably why. Right. Well, but they hacked the they hacked the hotel in Mexico. True. They did. Well, that right? was the hotel. They were in a different. Right. From what I can tell, is they left from a resorty place right. where she was vacationing, right. and they went into the sticks. We're talking about not a hospital here. We're talking about a, a like a, a religious type facility hospital, right? right. You and know. the and the whole reason why she was so important to them was because she had the floppy disk. Yeah, right. The but chief got still back trying to find the disk, but they don't know that. But even after they find out that it's trashed. They're still make sure she because she's aware of how it works. They're trying to figure out if she can tell them how it works. At this point, the internet's coming after her hard. Uh, They hacked the hotel. They hacked the payphone that she's on. The internet changed her identity. It hacked her passport. Now she's Ruth Marks. Okay, right. She she literally can't get back into the country because she's no longer Angela Bennett. They've changed everything. Right. And so the people at the, I don't know if it's the embassy or, or whoever handles this, is trying to get her a temporary visa. And they're like, look, this is who you are, Ruth Marks. And they this make isn't her your address and blah, 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 blah. Well, yes, right. that's me. It's her picture, everything. Right. So she just goes picture. along with it. She just goes along with it. And so her social Ruth security Marks. number and everything matches with this Ruth Marks now. Right. And the fact that she signs it ends up coming back to bite her because they're like, look, you signed this. You're saying that it's you. Right. Well, it's my handwriting, but it's not my signature. <laughs> right. Right. You don't sound crazy at all. Yeah, <laughs> and so uh, they, she gets back finally into the United States. She gets off the bus. They for even they even hacked her car and turned it into an El Camino. They towed her car. They didn't hack her car. This is the thing, James. Is you're taking this <laughs> as hacked so her car and turned it into a pickup truck. <laughs> <laughs> that was sort good. Of. That was good. Uh, <laughs> but that's the thing is. You're taking this too literally as like the net means that everything they do has to be in the internet. It's the internet wow. that's after her, dude. You don't. You this don't. company, this this organization that's after her, uh-huh. has a bunch of people, and so they yeah, know. tow the vehicle. Yeah, they they're being inefficient. But what yeah. company and organization is not inefficient? <laughs> Tell me that. She gets home and they hacked her house. They wiped all her files. Oh Everything's my gone. Gosh. They wiped her files. It's all gone. They deleted <laughs> they everything. Did. They deleted her furniture. <laughs> they, deleted her, they deleted all of her computers. That's what I'm saying, dude. It's all gone. They put it. I dragged it all into the bin and, and emptied it. <laughs> Format C colon. <laughs> Format house colon. <laughs> My home drive's gone. <laughs> Everything, man. And and they then this legit they even hacked the police and gave her a false record. Yeah, that they she was did a, do. a prostitute and a drug dealer. So her house is up for stuff. sale in when she live gets home. time. On yeah. top of it. So her, right. her her house is up for sale when she gets home. Right. A realtor's showing it. Legitimately. Right. <laughs> Realtor is staging, getting the house ready to stage the house and stuff yeah. like that. It hasn't even shown. It's not on the market yet. But three days ago, they, we're here with moving trucks. So the minute yeah. she got on the plane to leave for Mexico, they are in here clearing out the house, right? The, you know, setting this up. And Jack is in a car sitting outside, hacking the police computer, basically, right? Yeah. Right? Like he's not far away. He's right there from his laptop over a cellular device. I mean, like that's this, yeah. this is high it's end legit. stuff. I don't. They had he had car Wi Fi. CarPlay. Car it's, uh, it's CarPlay. It's uh, CarPlay. The, uh, the original. <laughs> he paired it with yeah. the, with the I don't even know what kind of car he had, but it wasn't one that came with that Bluetooth capability, I'll tell you that. Uh, no one knows who you are. So the cops are like, no one can tell us who you are. No one can verify. Janice from across the street is over at this point. She can't even verify who it is. She's not a treat, let me tell you. Even no. though we saw a shot of her earlier staring at her through her garbage can. Janet's right. like... She watches her all the time. Yeah. She keeps walking past, like, throughout that whole 
scene, and she just keeps <laughs> having these little like. Are you sure about that? Is that like really? Is that me? You? I don't think you can even do that. That's what I'm saying. It's like, dude. chill, Janet. Why don't you eat another t- Twinkie or something? <laughs> Jesus. Mind your business, Janet. That's right. Out there with her binoculars, right outside the window. I've never seen her before, but I was staring at her all the time. Bull crap. Yeah. Angela is able to escape because somehow when the cop comes back from checking the computer, she can tell it's bad news. Oh, geez, this ain't good. She uses her spider sense. She thinks I'm a prostitute. (laughs) I can just tell by him looking at me. He thinks I'm a prostitute. Right. She's like, I'm going to go to the bathroom. Ends up stealing stealing the realtor's phone. Yeah. Well, before you needed your face scan to be able to open the thing, right? You could steal cell phones back in the day. No problem at all. Takes the realtor's phone, dips out, and is able to get away from the cops, but... Uh, Jack sees her running down the street, right? Gives chase immediately. Gives chase immediately. She calls Cathedral, yep. to, finds out that the internet fi- had her this boss fired. This is Angela fired. Bennett. Right. They had her boss fired and replaced, and there's a new, less attractive Angela ba- okay. Angela Bennett working there. You didn't think that was effective, though, as far as, like, if you were that person calling in, trying to just talk to somebody, you find out your boss isn't there anymore, and then they're like, I'll put you through to Angela Bennett. And you're like, no, I'm Angela Bennett. And then they answer, and it's like this person's trying to say that they're you. Oh, dude, if somebody was like, That's a mind. this is James Hauser, yeah, no, that would definitely be like for a second. But then I'm just rolling up to the office to go find the person. Like, that's like, what I would do. Just smack them. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, what's up, what's up dude? Keep then, my name out your, out your mouth. <laughs> That's when you would get deleted. <laughs> well, they could try. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm definitely not going to call my ex-therapist who left left me for to stay with his wife or whatever she ends up calling. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got to do something, dude. That's the only person that could verify her identity. The only person who knows her is her ex-boyfriend, who is played by Dennis Miller, who is a therapist who shouldn't be practicing anymore because he violated, you know, yes, many, true. many laws, laws, yes, and things, and ended up staying with his wife and dumping Angela, and he shows up because she calls him like you're the only one, and he is immediately skeezy and hitting on her, right. And like, well, I'll go to a motel. Well, we can do that, you know. He was pretty skeezy, yeah. He was, right? I never picked up on it as a kid watching this, but yeah. Watching it this time around, I was like, he's pretty sleazy. And I look at those two guys and like, that's more the guy I would have been. <laughs> <laughs> trying to pick up on Sandra Bullock. You know? <laughs> it, she's trying to explain it to him and she's doing a terrible job. I hate this in movies where characters, it's like, just just tell them what happened. Right. And she's just giving them like little pieces that don't make any sense. You've never tried to explain something to somebody when you're really stressed out and had it come out wrong? You are such an apologist for this that you're just going to defend anything. What is it That's about? That's never happened to you, Is though? it Sandra Bullock? Is that what it it's is? It's not. No, I actually think this is just a, a legitimately <laughs> good movie. Okay. I thought, I think you've got a couple of valid points for sure of, right. like that knocked the movie to a certain degree. But I think it's an intense movie. I think it, it captures the your attention. The last thing it is is intense. Oh yeah, gosh, this, I, I think so this thing. Intense. No, I think this thing drags forever. No, I, so and is it because you don't? There is 17 minutes worth of action. If you were to compress this whole movie yeah. down, and be like, "Holy crap! How'd they get that done in 17 minutes?" That would be impressive. Two hours. The rest of this is just, oh my god, drudgery. What? Well, thrills. What are you talking? There's about? no thrill because, in this movie. So I think what's happening is the scenes that they are trying to build up the the yeah. psychological piece of it. Mm-hmm. You guys just don't. It's not effective for you, right? We we already here's, know the answer. Here's the why problem. it's not effective because I think I think now today in 2023 this would be a more effective movie because this could actually happen because everybody's stuff is all digital. Back in 1995, there were paper records of all this stuff that they had changed. But she doesn't have any proof with, of that. Within within a matter of hours, maybe a day, you could straighten all of this out. Okay. In 1995, maybe now there's, that's no longer the case. But back then, uh, th- they went to this big like, oh, her identity is completely gone. I'm like, no, there are pieces of paper that you can't that they would not be able to get to and she have access. Her mortgage to on the bank, but that's she or on the computer. She wouldn't. In 95. That's the problem no. with the mortgage, though. Is like, 
the a person shows up. Wally from has, the bank would know who you are. The DMV would have records. The 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 courts would have records. The mortgage companies would have records. Everybody with her with her picture and her signature and everything in her handwriting. The this DMV is, maybe for picture. DMV is the, the only picture. place. That's why DMV is the time. only place that would have the photo. Yeah, I don't think they had the picture. They weren't going around with the Polaroid. That's the only then. place. I'm just saying. The, my the the point is is that it it didn't work because it's whole time i'm like she's freaking out she's like i'm like go to the dmv and freaking just fix this like like it's not that to, i think in 2023 i would be more stressed out because i think it's easier uh or more plausible to do what they said they were doing in 1995 okay i understand what you're saying but i also think that the point of the movie isn't to try to be like this is like like look at any other movie we talk about or any movie that you like even any good movie even mm -hmm. <laughs> So There's, you're saying this isn't a good movie? No, I'm so just I'm trying. Take a good movie for example instead, James. There has to be some stakes, and if I don't if I don't feel like there's any stakes or any real so there's danger. Right. there's no room in this movie for you. You have to take this movie as this is literally how 1995 was. The movie is there is it's no set in the in the real world in 1995. It's not in the real world as in whatever though, because every movie is not set in the real world. Like it's. Any movie has its own universe. Sure. So this movie is saying that this is possible. So you have to like take it as this is a possibility because the sure. movie is saying it. Okay. Is. This is and even what I, happened to this one person yeah. as a hacker. Because in the Matrix, like, like in the Matrix, you're like, oh, there's no way that in 2000 you're gonna have a, a simulation. Like, it's like whatever, well, dude. Just because like, you weren't born with a plug port in the back of your head, bro. It's the it, they're in the year twenty five hundred in that movie. Okay, but my they're point is they're simulating the year two thousand. Sure, but my point is that <laughs> that was a terrible any, okay. <laughs> any movie though that you pull out, like kidding, it's in its own universe. Like you yeah. can't say that oh nineteen ninety five that I grew up in this couldn't happen. Like yeah. they're just saying like this is the technology we have. This is like where it's going, right? They're trying to make a statement of like this is where this goes if we keep pulling this thread. They didn't set it in a future's like, yeah, piece, right? They didn't like set it out in the future. I think even with that, it just it, to me. I know we're we're way off the plot here at this point <laughs> because we're like doing the end of the episode in the middle here. But yeah, um, it just wasn't exciting or thrilling in any way, shape, or form to me. Yeah, because is it just because you you were like this couldn't happen? I'm just like I don't with, go go straighten it out. I don't you know I just I didn't it never. That thing didn't have like it didn't. As a thriller, yeah. he doesn't see the danger. Yeah. He right. Doesn't feel, and I get it. I like, I see both of you guys' point, and I land somewhere in the middle for sure. Yeah. But a thriller, this is not. The like, danger. The danger to me is more this guy's trying to kill you. That that to yeah. me is like a okay. legitimate. I, I think there's like, interest right? in this movie, but there's just not entertainment. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I thought it was effective. Like you get off the bus, you finally like have to say you're somebody else. You get off the bus, your car's not there. You get home, you're. Your house is empty. It's up for sale. The cops show up. Yeah. They're saying that you're wanted for prostitution. Like, your whole world is crumbling. Yeah. I get oh, what true. you're saying. Like, that's as far true. as, like, go to the DMV, like, sure, but... <laughs> Not once in this movie <laughs> did I imagine I was Sandra Bullock and you just did that. That's weird, bro. <laughs> well, what, what are you going to do, do Lauren? so, like, frazzled and stressed, and, like, as a woman, you would yeah. just be like... How am I going to get out of this? Like, All right, that's fair. Yeah, yeah, it never never once occurred to me to try and put myself as a character. Maybe picture yourself as Sandra Bullock yeah. when you look at the Because the whole right. time, like from the boat. <laughs> I don't got time time, for that, dude. I got like, stuff to do. Oh my gosh. The whole time. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Maybe it, it, I might be the one that's wrong. I, I fully, I mean. <laughs> don't worry. The patrons will, will let us know let how us much know. they hate me I mean, and that I'm wrong. Don't more worry. More people James. hated this movie and liked it, so I'm probably with the majority, but. It's probably true. You know. It's close. Yeah. It's close. It's like it's pretty close to right down the middle. So I'm not saying mine's the only correct viewpoint. It's just what my viewpoint is. Making, sure. it, <laughs> making it therefore correct. <laughs> All right. So anyway, she's trying to pour her heart out to Dennis Miller in the hotel room. They knew everything about me. They knew my favorite drink, my favorite movie. The internet knows everything about me, and they used it to get to me. And 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 he's trying. He's like, look, I've got a friend, Ben Phillips, in the FBI. Maybe he can help look into this. You know, she doesn't really trust anybody, but she doesn't really have any other options either. So he goes to talk to his friend in the FBI, and she uses his laptop that she gave him to get back into the internet and see what she can find out. And she hacks back into the system, you know, the the Praetorian thing through the Mozart's ghost or whatever. And this is when she first sees the information about the senator's misdiagnosis of AIDS, which caused him to then kill himself 
something about him being homophobic or so. I didn't really catch yeah. that whole thread really. I think they were they utilized the fact that he was really homophobic to say that if he had AIDS and that was like at the time, nineteen ninety five, right? That was like known as you know, if you have AIDS, there's only way in, one way, right? Right, you're in a and homosexual so, relationship. So yeah. that he was so apparently mortified that he killed himself, which right. is kind of extreme. But it was a false positive, right? Well, right, well, yeah. He was being computer error, manipulated, right. Right. computer error, and so she she gets back on her chat, and this time there's no voice to text, but she gets Cyber Bob back in her chat, and she and Cyber Bob's like, "Don't mess with the Praetorians; these they're bad people, man. The the they'll freaking kill you." And she, he goes, we should meet IRL. And she goes, we should meet IRL in real life. And she says it. I'm like, that's for the grandmas watching. Um, <laughs> people will know what the hell she's talking about. But they're going to meet up at the Santa Monica Pier uh, in real life to try and figure out what to do. Meanwhile, Dennis Miller is picking up some pills from the pharmacy, and that is like something that's kind of innocuous and wouldn't normally mention it. In fact, they wouldn't have even be showing it in the movie if there wasn't an important reason. But the, they hacked the pharmacy – the internet puts the wrong pills in his bag, and now when he takes them, it's he's, it's a penicillin he's allergic to. Right. I also didn't realize that they use laser pointers for scanning pills. <laughs> yeah. They literally had like one of those pen like, laser like pointers, like a cat laser, and, and they're like running it across, and the cat's like chasing it. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> oh my gosh! All right, um, Angela's hotel phone rings, but it's like nobody on the other side. That's just like, heavy how do you breathing. Not know that, like, no, who calls you when you're staying at a hotel? Right. Like, don't pick it up. I'm like, it's obviously the internet. Right. And the internet can't talk. You would, you would think if somebody was to call you at the hotel room and you only the have one noise. person who knows you're at that hotel room, right. that it would be your yeah. therapist guy. You would think so, but it's not. And so now she's in the car with Dennis, and she explains at the center. And this was the literal. Where he took a quote internet blood test. <laughs> They did say that. Didn't they? <laughs> I think she did say that. Internet blood test. It was an internet blood test. And what was your IP address? One twenty seven zero zero one. The hell is that? You just Not jack your local. You just jack your modem straight into your arm, and then Again. you take an internet blood test. Again, <laughs> right? And then he thought he had AIDS, and then Dennis Miller starts to convulse. Probably for out of embarrassment for being in this movie, but we're not sure. <laughs> it might have been the penicillin pills that he was taking, and he ends up in the hospital. Right. Right. And here's how you know the hospital gets hacked, because the, 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 he, she goes into the hospital and she talks to this nurse who you should not trust at all, because right. the first thing the nurse says is, look, he's going to be okay. We've intubated him, and he's going to be fine. You can go in there. And then she goes in and has a whole last conversation with somebody that's not intubated. Do you know what the hell intubated means? This is a nurse that doesn't understand what intubated is. <laughs> <laughs> she says he's intubated, and he walks in. He's just laying there. All right. First clue there. Not a real nurse. She works for the internet. Yeah. She didn't Thank have you. Wikipedia to look this up at the time. Okay? That's what I'm saying, dude. She's like intubated and intubated. She couldn't Google it. She's like, just say the first medical word I can think of. She was afraid of the internet. <laughs> she hadn't watched a full season of House yet. Has no idea what she that She just means. got hired by right. the internet, so she doesn't know that stuff yet. No, for sure. I'm going to be a nurse, honey. They taught me one word, intubated. <laughs> why, does, why does... Okay, tell me this, Lauren. As somebody that was invested in the love story in this movie, it I seems mean, like... It was entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> Why on earth is she and her therapist having this touching moment in the hospital after what had happened in their past? He's super skeezy at the motel, and now all of a sudden they're having this super touching moment together in bed. It didn't make any sense to me. Well, it seems like they really connected, though. But, like <laughs> before, like before, I was like, "Oh, like I really am married, and we can't," you know. But yeah. like she never got out. Like she even tells the guy, like she only had two other relationships, one being the therapist. Yeah. Oh, and, that's right. That's right. So, right. and then it's like you can really open up to your therapist. So. I. Well, that's who, who that's exactly long, what happened. Who knows how long she <laughs> saw him? <laughs> <laughs> how, how, yeah, you're right. How long, how long has it been? Like, right. That they like, wow. she saw him as a like, therapist patient. Right. And then, you know. Then they had a relationship. Right. And then he did tell her in the uh, hotel that he he was divorced now. I know. Right. It just seemed kind of hacky. come back. Like, like, she was in the hospital. Like, she travels back. Like, you'd be so frazzled and like, yeah. oh, I'm so done with my trip. And so, like, this is the only one she feels like. That is gonna be there to save her. Well, and he so. did too. He went and he got her a hotel room. Yeah, and no, he did. Like, and yeah. all this. He seems so slimy that I didn't. Oh, I, I think was like, he seemed like a nice guy. Yeah, women I never go for jerks. Miller. I don't. I don't get it. Women never go for jerks. No, <laughs> it's true. And all of a sudden, I'm like, they're trying to now make him likable. And I thought, 
It just seemed like a fast shift, but that's fine. I'm willing to say that, that the two of them have suddenly now seemed to be back in a serious relationship. She's laying in bed with him in the hospital. It was probably kind of I thought happy. it was super likable up until the sponge bath. Like, oh, I'm dreaming of sponge bath. Yes. Like, you lost me there. <laughs> he had to slip that in to be like, I got to say something. Right, a little right bit as he's sleazy. leaving yeah. consciousness, yeah. right? Yeah. All right, so she goes to the Santa Monica Pier to meet with Cyber Bob, but Cyber Bob isn't coming. We never, I felt gypped for not ever getting to meet Cyber Bob in real life. Oh, could you imagine? Unless he's Cyber Bob. No, because he goes, because he goes to Cyber Bob's um, place. Jack go, and Cyber Bob Bob doesn't understand anonymity Anonymity. at all because he's got like, for his address, Bob, whatever, Fox. Yeah. And he's got the little smiley that's the same as his icon on the internet. Right. That doesn't yeah. go well for Bob. So he's like, I guess this is him. <laughs> Bob Fox, I'm here to kill you. <laughs> Have you seen this boy? No, not that one. He shows <laughs> up. He shows up at the pier. Gra- Jack grabs her. It's the first time they've been together since they were together. Um, grabs her and he's like, we're, we're getting out of here. I'm taking you because it's a public place and there's tons of people. So he can't just shoot her here in the middle of everybody. But, but a, a dancing, an aggressive dancing furry saves the day. Okay, there's this bunny that's getting all up in people's business, dancing Furries around. for the win. Right? Again. Again, and this time he comes in and wants to kind of grind on the two of them as they're walking by. He's a little aggressive. She, he was real aggressive, but in this case it gives her the chance to get away from him and hide in the merry-go-round. Right? Right. The merry-go-round. Never before has so little happened in a chase scene when the score is working so hard. Dun-dun! 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 Dun, dun. They're Somebody just in a shot circle. one of the horses. There's no yeah, chase. A, a stuffed animal. Okay, and yeah. how does he pull that off? Silencer. No, but like you're telling me you're leaving the gun in there. Like, you know how busy those like photo booth things are at those carnivals? That's what I'm saying. I, what do you mean leave the gun in there? He didn't have it before. He didn't. Yeah. No. So he picked up How do you know he gun? didn't have it on him, like on his person? He shows her the gun in, on his waist. Oh, did he? Yeah, he, oh, he lifts his shirt that. up and shows her the gun. Right, like, basically, Lauren, I don't give us any trouble. Like, really? You're but just leaving that chill in there? Regardless, they're trying, the score is trying to make it seem like it's this big, intense chasing, but nothing. she's literally just going around on a merry-go-round. I think they were going more for like, because uh, before she, she even meets up with him, nowhere. she's like kind of freaking out that she's just in that much public, like in, yeah. with that many people. Yeah. And so I think it was more like focusing on that, maybe. Okay. Maybe not. Uh, Maybe Dennis, it sucked. Dennis Miller. Well, she ends up just going into the middle of the merry-go-round, and then she's just gone. And by the time he gets there, she's not there. I was like, oh. <laughs> incredible chase scene. <laughs> you know, it's an incredible chase. Maybe if you or I were a little more introverted, because I don't yeah. think either one of us struggles with going out and talking to people and no. being around people in public and stuff. No. Maybe we would see a little more of the fear of this movie. I because, like, be legitimately... Yeah. I I don't question going on vacation to Mexico. I don't question hanging out, walking down the beach with some dude, whatever. No, no big deal to me. Uh, none of these situations seem exceedingly dangerous, and I guess that would add a whole bunch of extra. Right. You're also not a woman. Well, oh, did you just oh, assume my wait, gender? Wait, Are on. you serious? <laughs> You're wow. special because you're a woman? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> well, she is. And because, yes. <laughs> it's true. And I grew up with all women growing up. All right. Up, no, so I, 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 I'll joke, all joking aside. <laughs> yeah. No, there is there is certainly a level of fear that isn't present. Exactly. You know, with us when we're walking around by ourselves. But even, sure. I'm saying not even just the women's stature stature port portion of it i'm just saying like an introvert in general going yeah. out and finally go and do something and my world is falling apart because of it too right right i got you you lift you leave your house for one second three seriously. days and all your stuff is deleted but se- seriously dude and that, i was like i thought the internet was going to hack that merry-go-round all of and a sudden it it spin it really fast it like a gravitron it's just going to go either power Ooh. down and stop or it was going to go like that would have away. been interesting. He pulled his laptop out and he just hacks the merry girl. That's what I'm saying, dude. And it's just like he spins it faster and it goes faster. <laughs> Little kids firing Flying off, off that thing, dude. Remember the merry grounds at the park where you just get dude, that thing going? Until there was somebody... a video going around on the internet a while ago of one of those things yeah. that we used to spin them as fast as we could, yeah. and you'd get thrown from the inside to the outside occasionally, right? Yeah. These kids took a scooter, like a 50cc scooter, and put the back tire up on it with some buddies in it, and they started spinning this thing, and somebody got let go from it, and they like poured themselves through the bars on the way out. Like Whoa. Literally, this thing came out at a million. It was a great video. i got to find that again. Find it, please, because I remember I, I, hanging Listen on for dear life. Discord. 
hanging on <laughs> yeah. for dear life on the outside yeah. of the thing, like like you're getting sucked out you of an airplane or something. You're actually getting swung right around the outside. Yeah, yeah crazy. Geez. Awesome, bro. And you come around, and you level your buddies with your feet because you're right. Yeah, and as long as you didn't break your arm or something, it was a good day. This is how right. the 1900s were. Guys. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. She, she, she is very smart. And throughout this whole movie, she does all kinds of very smart things. She ditches the cell phone with the homeless guy. Clever girl. Right? She, in this case, loses him in the merry-go-round. She, I mean, she's not a, a dense character by any stretch of the imagination. And she okay. uses her smarts to get herself out of trouble multiple times. Uh, while this is all happening, Dennis Miller gets dosed by somebody in the hospital. So now he's dead. And the nurse, again... This nurse who's not a nurse works for the internet is like, well, he had diabetes, right? Isn't that why he was here? Let me, uh, let me just, let me just check this. Uh, yeah, no, he was diabetic. That's why he's dead. I don't remember from five minutes ago when we talked. <laughs> <I don't remember. laughs> he was intubated, right? I, I think so. We're shooting. <laughs> yeah, I talked down to his him. He definitely was. <laughs> <laughs> My God, I don't even think. I, I, I don't even. Me, at least at this point, Sandra Bullock's like starts to actually fight the internet. And she takes her computer and just shoves that on the ground. And I'm like, yes, I just wanted to go through and start destroying computers <laughs> and fighting the internet directly. Well, she just drives the car through a bunch of radio shacks. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Punches a modem, like p- rips it out from underneath the desk and just starts beating Does an office space up. on some printers. Yes. Fight the internet. The internet is your real enemy here, Sandra. Okay? Not this nurse who I don't even think was hacked. She's just dumb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <sighs> All right. She gets arrested. She takes Dennis Miller, who's now dead, his BMW, his Beamer, and it's flagged as stolen. So she ends up getting arrested after a really great car chase. I mean, there's there's Bullet, there's the French Connection, and then there's the Net car chase. I like like I, right up there. I, I yeah. <laughs> what In that she, order. What does she drive about ten feet? Skids out, ends up going off road. Yeah. It runs 10 more feet and falls down. <laughs> well, it happened to just start raining. It's like, yeah, this it, is it the time muddy. for a car chase. What's it was it? muddy. Oh, it yeah. was muddy. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. But she's got such a huge lead on these guys because she's already at the bottom of it. Yeah. She gets up the other side and is immediately caught. Right, immediately. By these middle-aged cops. She probably hasn't slept. She's wiped. She smacked her <laughs> head. I thought she's white. I thought, I thought, I thought the <laughs> same thing. I thought the same thing, but I was looking at her, and then I, I reprocessed the... the way her yeah. lips came together. I was like, no, no, that's not white. That's different. Once she's in the jail, she has an attorney that's assigned her, which actually was the, one of the gals from uh, The Fugitive that was on Tommy Lee Jones's Fugitive Squad. Uh, so I was happy to see her in there. But she doesn't buy her whole story. Again, not really explaining it well. She's like, you know all the stuff that happened in Atlanta and Chicago and New York, and there's this this organization behind it called The Internet. And they're, She sounded they're really crazy. To, <laughs> she sounded nuts. Yeah. But even the... like. Well, it's fine because we've all got this gateway virus protection thing now. So, you know, there's no way any of this would be able to happen. Wait, that's it. She goes, it's a Trojan horse. Eureka. I'm like, what does that mean? I still don't (laughs) understand what that means. You explain to me in the simplest terms, just so the audience understands this revelation that she's come to between the Praetorians and Gateway and the, so you, the you Trojan understand the, the concept of a Trojan horse in general, though, right? Yes, you have the soldiers hidden inside. You have thing. something that looks like something that's good, thing. and there's bad stuff inside of it. Yes. So, in computer terms, it would be a program in this case, Gateway, which is supposed to be a protection software. Not an antivirus. And there's right. commercials. It's to be like an antivirus. There's commercials throughout the entire movie talking about how great Gateway is. Right. Yeah. So. Gateway in this case is an application that's supposed to protect your computer, but it's a tr- there's a tro it's a Trojan horse because there's malicious software inside. Or in her terms, she says that there's some sort of exploit, right? right. Like present in the in the software, the right. pie. And, and so, so that that's how Gateway they get who's in. Gateway is giving this to people or selling this to people as a protection, but really it's allowing them Backdoor, to have access yeah. to their system. So they can hack you if you don't have it, and then even if they, even if you buy it to use it, then they still can hack you, basically. Right. So basically they don't have to hack you anymore. They just have it in. Wouldn't right. that be super... Don't like you, how, how long could that business model be viable for before everyone understands? Well, it's been going since the 90s so far. <laughs> no problems. <laughs> you we're still being hacked. Why are we paying for Gateway? You know? Well, th- so... <laughs> Legitimately. <laughs> right. I maintain that the antivirus softwares are the problem with my computers yeah every computer i run without one runs perfectly everyone with one is trash Interesting. there are there are a lot of like botnets out there that like people's computers are hacked and they right. don't know it because they only use it 
when they need it, right? right? So a lot of people have viruses on their computers or that their computer's compromised in some way and they don't know it for a long time. Gotcha. She calls her mother from the jail to try and be like... Sorry, I couldn't make a joke out of that. No, I, I literally, <laughs> all I wanted was an explanation so that people understood what's happening. Here. She realizes yeah. the gateway that has been proposed pro- promoted throughout the news as this great company that's now going to protect people are actually the ones doing all this nonsense. Right. Right. Okay. Um, the mom, when she calls her mom from jail, that scene was just brutal. It was brutal. So sad. So sad. sad. She's like, mom, I need you to tell them who I am. And she's like, I I don't know. Calling like this. I'm not going to pull this off. Right. Right. She already knew it wasn't going to work, but she's so desperate. Yep. There's not a nurse at this nursing home. Right, that you go and you see your mom at this nursing home. They just allow you to go in, but don't know who you are. I'm sorry, Judy at the front desk. This is what says, I've been saying. Hey, Sandra or Bennett, whatever. Hey, how you doing? You here to see your mother again? <laughs> she's having a pretty rough day. She doesn't remember much, but she does look forward to the candy. It's all she's been talking about. Somebody there knows you. I know your mom no, doesn't know you, no, and that is because... sad and it's tragic and it's terrible. <laughs> No, though, because the therapist moved the mom. Remember, she was so concerned, like, please move my mom. So he did that before he died. But oh. there's still the other nursing home, and there would be a paper trail of where she came from from She's this nursing home. She's got limited time. She can't and make they all would these know phone her. calls. You, don't you dare. Just time to go to Mozart's. <laughs> How did she get the phone play number with, to play call around the new place where comes. mom was? That's a good point. She found that phone number somehow. Right? It's two phone numbers. You can't Google it. Not in 1995. <laughs> All right. Uh, ben Phillips from the FBI shows up to bail her out of jail. So that's lucky. Um, and he's like, oh, man, we've been looking all over for you ever since we found out you were back in town. We've been trying to nail these guys. Thank God you're here. Let's get you out of here. We'll have you come testify and all is going to be well. This idiot FBI agent manages to get a quarter mile down the street before blowing it. Yeah. Okay. This is the worst fake FBI agent of all time. I they're never driving, told you the desk was ruined. <laughs> they're driving along and he's like, so uh, definitely an FBI agent. You uh, still got that disc or what's up? Right? <laughs> she, oh, I can't believe you don't have that disc. I know. <laughs> she Did you make a copy of it before it got destroyed? <laughs> she immediately looks at him and goes, you a-hole. <laughs> yeah. like, like I'm the stupidest person alive. It was that quick, right? I never told you it was ruined. And the other guy's on the other end of the freaking card plate TV thing, right. listening to the conversation happen. He's like, this idiot! You know, you can see it. <laughs> it's like, you can't, right. no! He's parked across a bridge. They have to drive across a bridge and into this, like, neighborhood where there, where Jack is parked. She tries to grab the wheel. Sandra's now trying to get away from this fake FBI agent. Grabs the wheel, steps on the gas, is trying to get the car out of control, and ends up crashing into Jack, who's sitting in another car surveilling. Like, right. that's lucky. Well, yeah. they were probably going to bring her to him so he'll kill her. Right. But yeah, it is fortunate that fortunate. she just happened to steer right into him. Steers right into him. Uh, they, All right. Oh, go ahead. Do you believe that you're driving down the car, down the road in a Caprice? Yeah. It's got a bench seat. So yeah, she could reach over and stand on the gas pedal. Sure. That car made 190 horsepower maybe mm-hmm. and had brakes on all four wheels. <laughs> There's another pedal there. And she's pulling on the steering wheel from the passenger seat. Do you honestly think you could not get this thing stopped in a safe manner? <laughs> I wait, in this on. universe, the cars hold, don't work. Hold that on, way. Oh, give me hold a on. Break. check this out too. She's got that pedal with her foot on it, and you can just oh, that pedal doesn't do nothing oh, no more. Literally, yeah. click. Off. Oh, I didn't think about that. He like, also is an idiot fake <laughs> FBI agent, though. Also a valid point. Just also saying. He couldn't even point. be like, but you that's sure just, it didn't get destroyed in Mexico? <laughs> this is my problem. Is like the, the danger doesn't seem dangerous. Okay. <laughs> as, she's, as she's still trying to steer it on, he's like, you sure you don't have it? <laughs> well, Where's the floppy? Where's the floppy disk? <laughs> All right. So and of course she unbuckles his seatbelt because she's brilliant. Yes. Yes. Right before they right before crash. they crash. She has so the. She, she's yeah. fine. He she, dies. Yeah. She has the opposite issue of uh, every other character we've ever <coughs> talked about on this show, and that's oh, the fact that. that she actually can think about all the things you wouldn't think about. Yes. Except going to the DMV. No. But, except or, or except the nurses that. or the nurses. Yeah. The, the mothers. But like home. she's really. <laughs> able to like she's just very proficient throughout yeah. the whole movie where like normally characters are like 
I'm going to run up the stairs on top of the building. And I can't of go the anywhere. Front door. Right. No, yeah. let's let's hide in the shed full of, uh, you know, chainsaw saw blades and yeah. chainsaws. <laughs> no, I want, and I, I said it before. I want to give her credit. She's yeah. very smart. And it's a character. I, I like Angela Bennett. Uh, I just don't like the movie she's in, but I liked her. <laughs> okay. Uh, she gets out of the car and she runs back over that bridge. And now the bridge is starting to rise and it's rising for no other reason than to provide tension for this chase scene. Cause there's no boat coming. There's no boat. And as soon as she gets off of it, it stops and he's just standing up on top because Jack gets to the edge and can't jump over it or follow over it, right? Right. And he's like, I'm going to stand up here for 10 minutes and stare down at you as you run away dramatically. <laughs> but there's no, reason for the, there's no reason for the bridge to go up. It was on other a schedule. Than somebody was sitting there going, <laughs> I better help provide tension for this racing or this chase scene. Oh, here she comes. Here she comes. <laughs> and he's like over there raising the thing up, helping her out, man. Yeah, it would have been more effective. <laughs> If they had I'd, finished raising it and showed the boat coming through. Finish raising yeah. it, show a boat. Like, just do that. Then James the can thing. understand why. Do the, then it does He really just, wants to know why. Then it just doesn't seem like, like it, there's no reason for it to be happening. That's all. Again, right? it could be, like, just poor editing choice. Or have her, or have her uh, you know, jump off the bridge and swim away if you don't want to raise the bridge and get a boat and do all that stuff. Right. Always... Always, if you have a drawbridge and a car chase, and a, jump the damn drawbridge. Oh, I thought that's what was going to happen, too. Why waste the opportunity to jump the drawbridge then he with can't the car? Stare down dramatically at her as she runs away and think about how he's maybe still in love with her. I maybe. think he is. I think so. I think that's the only reason he hasn't killed her in the opportunities he's had so far is because he still has feelings for her. I think he's very conflicted. Well, he did say he's genuinely attracted to her. All right. Who's not? And this is in the Santa Monica Pier. And this is one of the few movies that's ever been allowed to use an F word in a PG-13 when referring... I've seen some others. When referring to the sexual act. Oh, interesting. They're allowed to say it in other contexts, but and not like this in a PG-13 movie. And she has that awful... Like, I couldn't believe she said that to yeah. me. She says, I'm surprised you didn't kill me first and then... F me. Yeah. yeah. And I was like... Yo, what did oh. she just say? <laughs> yeah, right. That yeah. was pretty. That was pretty dry. There's, Very there uh, is definitely yeah. fire between the two of them. I felt like, personally, I don't know what you guys thought. Did you buy the 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 tension between the two of them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think so. I didn't like him that much, but yeah, no. yeah, no. But there was something there. I think you're not supposed to like him. It worked, right? right. There's sometimes there's two people like I don't not at all do I buy this, but with these two right. I, thought it, I thought it worked for the most part. Uh, all right, then live on the news, it was such a oh. <laughs> plot information delivered by the news. We've done this a hundred times. Uh, just an FYI for everybody, uh, the federal government switching over to Gateway from Windows Defender. So I uh, just want to let you guys know, like this is the news. You know, we'll be in the uh, auditorium across the street in room uh, booth uh, 279 if you want to check it out. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, and then, all right, so here we go. Stealth mission at, their, at her old office. This is the next thing she's going to do. She was work from home. This is actually working to her benefit now because no one there recognizes her, right? And she can get in and mix among people and no one's going to be like, hey, it's you. Uh, otherwise, they wouldn't have been able to replace her and everyone would have been like, you're not Angela Bennett. Right. Right? So they use that to their benefit here, too. She sneaks in, finds a workstation, is able to ascertain where the fake Angela Bennett is on the floor by calling her and having her stand up, and she looks around. Uses that information then to record her keystrokes through her workstation where she is so she can get the password. Am I, am I doing this yep. right so far? Yeah. Okay. Yep, nailed it. Then she pulls the fire alarm because she wants to get access to fake Angela's computer workstation. Everybody files out. She then goes and gets into the system. I did like that on the fire thing. Like, let's get a fire alarm. There's a full 3D rendering of the building <laughs> on the fire alarm system. Yeah. You know, that took a lot of time and energy to make. Probably could have just had a list of, you know, floors and fire alarms. But Or just go and pull the physical fire alarm. Or just alarm. go pull in the physical one. Any of those things would have been fine. Yeah. I love little touches like that. Anyway, uh... You know what's super safe during a fire? Shutting all the lights off in a building? 
Did yeah. you guys notice that? Yeah, we, I thought that was kind of a weird choice. We were actually in all the drills in school for fire. We were supposed to turn off the lights and close the door. Ah. You said you turn off the lights and close the door to signify that that room is clear, that that has been cleared, and that there's nobody in there for the. I don't think that's protocol in an office I, building. I have had fire uh, alarm shuts up and all. We get harder to escape and trip and die on things. Yeah, you'd think so. Uh, otherwise, well, generally speaking, though, you'd kill the power in case it is electrical, and you go to backup systems only. The one sure, thing I, I could no see idea. is, yeah, like emergency lights coming on maybe. I but just, they didn't really have emergency lights in that building, which was odd. Not a huge deal. I just thought that was weird. Like fire alarm goes off and well, all the lights go off. Like, some of that could be because they literally were trying to simulate it and just turned off the lights instead of actually pulling the fire alarm. Right. right. Like we don't have the budget for that. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Yeah. We only got fake firefighters. <sighs> we can't pull the actual alarm. You know, I was thinking about fake Angela. And when the internet was handing out their assignments to everybody, she really got the short end of the stick. They're like, all right, Jack, you got to track her down, seduce her, sleep with her if you, if you need to, down in Mexico, get the disc. Angela's like, fake Angela's like, cool, what do I get to do? You got to go work a crappy nine-to-five job <laughs> in some <laughs> building. A debug <laughs> programs. Debug programs. What? I'm like, what? She really got the crappy end of the stick in this whole situation. Okay, I kind of felt bad for her for a little bit. Uh, she hacks into the files of her new identity, Ruth Marks. She's on her computer. And she's trying to undo it and delete her old ide- her you know fake identity or whatever. Like, no, you need mainframe access for that. And ultimately, she's able to uh, see. I have to look at my notes here because this is uh, so foreign to me. She searches the Praetorians and gets Dale's virus out of the desk and ends up. Um, what the hell she, did she do? So she she. Finds the FedEx bag that she mailed to Dale with the with the virus. Wolfenstein 3D virus. So she's got the virus on the right. red floppy. But what does she get she off the computer? She takes a blue floppy and copies the info all on the, the information of the Praetorians That's into it. that blue floppy. Thank you. And then she escapes like Ethan Hunt at CIA headquarters in Langley dressed up like a firefighter. So I watched this. Yeah. And I, I looked away for a second. Like, I actually watched this. I didn't have a phone out because I don't have one anymore. Yeah. But I looked away for a second. I was like, where the hell did she get firefighter gear? And now, while well, I was say <laughs> There was... I Yeah, I, okay. I, I, I yeah. went back okay. 14 seconds and I watched it again. And legitimately, this firefighter is on a ladder checking above the drop ceilings and stuff for everything but he took his turnout gear off and i'm pretty certain that in a building with the fire <laughs> alarm on and right. stuff they do not take off their turnout no. he's up Relatively there he's sure. on the ladder in boxers and a t-shirt like, right? uh, like, uh, <laughs> this is the best way to do this. i've got my uh hat and uh <laughs> my gloves on we'll be fine hat and gloves all we need That's buddy good. It's good. She ends up losing, so she runs out. There's a candlelight vigil for healthcare going on or something outside down the street, <laughs> right? They're like, is it a march or it's is a it new a Obamacare? Vigil? I don't know what it was. <laughs> she runs through that in '95. Good. All right, Jack. <laughs> Jack right. sees her and ch- tries to chase her. She's going against the crowd, you know, down the thing. Now she runs to a computer convention, which guys. It's it's not as bad, but it's a step away from a pummel horse in the middle of town. Okay? Yeah. Can I just say that? Right. Going back to Jim Cotta. It's like she's running away and like there's a computer convention. It said it. Right on, here. Like I said, when you were in the news, yeah. it says whatever this uh, booth will be uh, over. Right. And right. So she has the information she and knows, knows right. where to go. That's like if she'd been running through the cannibal town and yeah. she'd run into a computer store and like right exactly like a hey, Radio needed. Shack. Yeah, like, <laughs> what? Right. Perfect. She runs in. She goes to a random computer and uploads the data to the FBI she, on Greg. Yeah. So she sends them an email. And she types a really long email. I'm like, can you just write "see attached" and send that thing? You think so? <laughs> she types out a whole paragraph. Then she's able to hack in, like, log into their mainframe. Right. Which. This part was confusing to me because their mainframe wouldn't be at the convention center. You wouldn't be able to access it. It's the internet. Okay, so but apparently she, she remotely accesses their mainframe. The internet's the trying to find her. They don't know where she is. And she puts the red floppy into the computer. So at first she uploads the the all the salacious details to the FBI. Right. Pulls that at the last second, right before Jack is about to find her, gets the red floppy disk into the machine. When she's trying to upload the blue floppy though it's funny because they did the usb thing where she yeah. puts it in and it's upside, upside down, down. Yeah. <laughs> and she had I, to flip it i chuckled because yes. like been there yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep yep <laughs> done that <laughs> jack then hacks into the using the program that's on the machine 
the Praetorian program, hacks into the FBI, like, I can undo whatever you just sent, no problem. Hacks into the FBI in public view in the middle of a convention, yeah. just right there. And he goes, all I have to do is hit escape, and everything that you did is undone. I'm like, don't you hit that escape button. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> right? Nasty with that escape button. But we know that that virus from Wolfenstein 3D, if you hit the escape button, it chews up whatever is in there. That's how the virus works. When in actuality, it just pulls up the main menu. (laughs) (laughs) He hits escape, and it it just hacks the mainframe of the Praetorians, and it all melts. Literally, there's like a visual melting of information on this. This is what got me here, is you're staring at 8-bit graphics on the screen. Yes. And when it starts to deteriorate and melt, it's in like 64 bit. <laughs> it's like they're making it look distorted by making the graphics more complex. Yeah, it looks almost yes. like film melting. Yes. Right? Like you can't do that with 8 bit. You would just lose one of the pixels, would go away. No, you're right. <laughs> they chase her into the back room. Uh, fake Angela gets shot by Jack because he thought it was regular Angela. He then chases it. Now they're like, I, I don't know. Even he's confused about who Angela is. He doesn't even know. Um, as they're running through there, real Angela gets stuck on the roof. They're on the catwalks running around, yeah, and I'm running singing, around. I'm too sexy for my shirt. Dude, <laughs> I don't know why, but Shake. it happened. She shaked her tush on the catwalk. Right. Right. That happened. But she, but because she can't hack doors, she's you know can't get through where she's trying to get through to. But she realizes that, hey, once I'm out here, I can't open these doors. Right. Which is brilliant because she goes back the other way and hides and waits for him to get past and then rips through the other way. Rips through the other way. Finally, he catches up to her and she's pulled a giant fire extinguisher off the wall. And she's hiding this fire extinguisher that's half of her size. Right. She runs into it on her way over there and literally looks at it like, F you, fire extinguisher. (laughs) She does. Right? (laughs) This thing, if she's five feet tall, this thing's two and a half feet tall. She's holding it. It's so clear she's got a giant fire extinguisher behind her back, and Jack rolls up like, what's up? You got anything behind your back? No. Why would you even ask me that? That checks out. I mean, she's just literally got her hand there. He walks up to her like, hey, you know, you you basically canceled my contract when you destroyed the internet, so. (laughs) He's like trying to riz her up again. (laughs) Trying to riz her up again. And this is when she, 105-pound Sandra Bullock, hits this guy with such force that he flies up and over the railing and 15 feet away from the catwalk. Well, she hits him twice. Right. Yes. But the, okay. the amount of time it takes <laughs> to swing this thing, he's got a gun <laughs> feet, several feet away, point yeah. blank range kind of range, obviously. He's close enough to get hit with a fire extinguisher. Yeah. The amount of time it would take to swing a fire extinguisher from behind your back if you are a badass. <laughs> Is enough time to pull the right. trigger a lot. Let alone one that's that big compared to you. Yeah. Right. It was huge. Well, she probably had some adrenaline. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. The mom strength. Yeah. Yep. Right. She like lifted a car up. She's like, <laughs> look at me. <laughs> I, hey, man. I, I believe it. I, I don't know about flying 15 feet away from the catwalk, but I, you know, I, I'm willing to, to suspend my disbelief and say, fine, the internet Are has been though? destroyed. The internet by a fire down, extinguisher. By a fire extinguisher, destroys the internet, lands on a, on a forklift down 15 feet away from the camera. That was good stuff. That's why we don't have a podcast anymore. And she, <laughs> the internet's now dead. They had to recreate it. Al Gore helped. Uh, thanks, Al. <laughs> thanks, Al. Uh, she hires her mom to be her gardener, and that's the end of the movie. She legit hired her mom to be the gardener. <laughs> No, you work for me but, now. Um, I forgot which plants you wanted me to plant. <laughs> You're fired. You're you know what? I'm going to come out and help you. Yeah. Okay. Fine. I'll show you how to do it. It was a kind of an. It was kind of an anticlimactic ending. You don't think so? Yeah, I didn't it was love the kind ending. of an anticlimactic. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. I could see movie. That. Yeah. The whole thing. I know we're not agree on that. I'm trying to get at least some agreement on the ending being. Yeah. The ending yeah. sucked. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It was just like, and I was like, that's oh, the end. okay, we could have already ended this. They, well, if they would have ended right. it when he landed on the forklift and yeah. then not brought that part back at all. I'm like, all right, cool. Right. Yeah. Yep. They could have done the, the text blurbs. <sighs> Boom, this happened to this guy. This happened to this guy. This person's still dead. This, you know, done. It's time to give this movie some flowers. Nope. Give it some awards. Be positive or try to be, at least. Are you capable sense. of being positive with this movie? Yes, I'm. Ca- I'm perfectly capable of being positive to the extent possible. 
and I will I will travel as far down that road as I can. Okay. We'll see. As we hand out some awards, we start off with the most prestigious award we give out, the Will Patton Award for Intensity. You want a war? I'll give you a war! I don't want them to gain another yard. You blitz all night! If they cross the line of scrimmage, I'm going to take every last one of you out. You make sure that they remember forever the night they played the Titans. Why? That's right. All right. We can settle this one way or another. Let's do it with our words. I know this has been a battle <laughs> throughout this entire episode, and it's probably only going to grow more heated, but at the end, we're going to shake hands. We're going to start off with who was the most intense actor in this movie. Clint, I'll start with you. Who's your nominee for the Will Patton Award for Intensity? Dennis Miller. Dennis he Miller? Was, he was an intense douche. <laughs> Straight I believe through. he wanted to have sex he with Sandra Bullock. He wanted Sandra Bullock <laughs> yeah. back Horrid. on the couch. Yeah, no, that's true. I, I believed it, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Uh, that's fair. Ryan. <laughs> Hold on, hold on. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, honestly, um, hmm, I might agree with you on that. <laughs> Dennis Mill. See, you're having a hard time. I am coming up with anybody on. No, this. I just he was pretty intense. The, the only other intense um, one would have to be the the bad guy. Himself, I didn't but, think he was very intense. Though. But I, there was definite moments where he wasn't. I put, I literally have on here Sandra Bullock question mark. Like, <laughs> I, 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 at I, times, like no one, but at times she was. They know everything about me. The internet knows everything. Right. You know, I, I I'm giving it to Sandra Bullock. Who did did you land on somebody? I'm sorry, I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell either. Yeah. Are you um, going with Dennis Miller? I'll go with Sandra Bullock. All right. You fair enough. A, fair enough. How, it's Bullock. not me. It's you, Clint. How uh, dare you abandon me in my time of need? I went with Lauren. Jack, the guy after Sandra. The guy, the guy that yeah. played Jack. Oh, yeah. okay. Because All right. he really was intense, and he had At some times, strong sure. persistence, like, and just, we're going to put this in, we're this, this, you yes. know. Yes. He did, it was he, assertive. He was nothing he was. if not yeah. Yeah. assertive. Uh Okay, less said about that, the better. Uh, J- <laughs> <laughs> J.P. Dozier went with Sandra Bullock. Said, honestly, there weren't many people to choose from in this movie. It was really between her and Ray McKinnon as Dale, and his death scene was kind of meh. So that's another one for Sandra Bullock. So that's three for Sandra, right? Uh, Matt Mariner joining us again, and he went with Jeremy Northam, who played Jack. He definitely sold me on his ridiculousness with his self-righteous speech on the boat and all of the unnecessary close-ups of his mouth. Gross. Yeah, that was a little excessive. (laughs) A little much, right? I I guess there's some people that might have enjoyed that, but I didn't. Uh, So so we got two for Jack, and now Craig Soto, the OG, coming back, and he also went with Jack. I don't know if it was his acting or just the accent, but I really liked him as the main villain. He was intelligent, smooth, and vindictive. He really didn't like being rejected and put Sandra Bullock's character through hell. So we uh, are going to have to turn to Clint here for a tiebreaker because we have three votes of Sandra Bullock, three votes for Jack, Clint, I, I had already said my second vote went for Jack anyway. Oh, you so, did? All right. Yeah. Well, then like Jack right is going to win the Will Patton Award for Intensity. So, congratulations to Jeremy Northam. I thought you did a fine job. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, good stuff. Again, you know, you look at a character that's in a movie that much, you're going to find some stuff where it's like, okay, that's just more of a softer scene. So he's not intense there. No. So it's like, yeah, not the whole time, but definitely. For sure. For sure. Uh, the next award we give out to whoever was the worst actor in the movie, the one that had the least range, the just, the just who had the range of a trash can filled with dirt. That's why we named our award after Steven Siegel. It's the Steven Siegel Trash Can Full of Dirt Award. Trash can, oh trash can, it's a trash can full of dirt, yeah. Love never dies, and neither do they. Love is eternal, and that's a long time. Yeah, so. What a douche. <laughs> Still <laughs> ridiculous. Every time. It's, it's never going never gonna to die. That's a long time. <laughs> Clint, who was the worst actor in this movie? Uh, Cyber Bob. Cyber Bob. Oh. <laughs> We're not, you know, could have absolutely been replaced by anybody. I never even saw the guy. I felt so cheated out of not getting to find out who they cast as Was Cyber he Bob. Been, he wasn't even an actor in That's the movie. That's what I'm saying. 
Oh, I don't know about that one. All right, we'll see. We'll see. Ryan, who you got? Wendy Gazelle. Wendy Gazelle. The imposter. Other, other uh, nega Angela. Wish.com Angela. <laughs> right. <laughs> Perfect. With her boy haircut. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, this is the Sandra here. Bullock stand-in. The, I don't think so. For real? I don't think so either. Uh, I went with Diane Baker, who played the mother. <laughs> I was going to say that. <laughs> I had that, too. And I was, was like, going to be like, Alzheimer's? So I was like, uh-huh. Well, that she one. doesn't actually have I know. Alzheimer's. Let's face it. She's a forgettable character. I, oh. <laughs> wait. You're not getting missing out on this. Oh, good for you. <laughs> yes. My legitimate thing with that as I watch it is like, yeah, she's got Alzheimer's, but she's smiling all the time. I don't think that's... The correct portrayal. That's, That's what I'm actually saying. how my grandma was. Really, she was yeah. really friendly uh, instead of being mean. Wow. I think she. I think her performance was awful. Meh. I. Th- she didn't. I didn't buy for a second that she had Alzheimer's. I mean, I, personally, I've had some family members that have had it. I don't want to make this like you know. Right. But I just didn't think she did a good job. That's yeah. All. But again, that's it, fair. You know, maybe she has people in her family and experience it differently. Who knows? Who knows? I don't know. But she's still in my trash. Maybe game. she's not a good actress. So that's also viable. Who'd you go with? Who's the worst actor? The Lauren? realtor. The realtor. <laughs> yeah. He wasn't Super good. obnoxious. I was gonna. If I had to pick somebody, I was gonna pick the lady across the street. So same scene. Yeah. Oh yeah. She yep. was so, bad like, too. There was a lot of bad that, actors. That was, yeah. yeah. It's bad. If you pressed me to make an actual. Not Cyber Bob. So is that four separate votes? That's four yeah. different votes. All right. Uh, J.P. Dozier went with Wendy Gazelle as the imposter. Yes, that's what she's credited as in the movie. She was just kind of there. and She was so bad, her own partner killed her in the end. Doing us all a favor from having to watch more scenes with her. I agree. Wait, wait, wait. Did you know, J.P., that's a good vote. But yeah. did you guys know there was a TV series, The Net? Oh, there was? And it's about the same thing. Well, let's go watch that. Maybe it's better. <laughs> Matt Mariner went with Dennis Miller as his trash can. I just don't like the guy. Let's leave it at that. Short to the point. There's a lot of people who don't. I appreciate that, brother. Uh, Craig Soto went with Gerald Burns as Jeff Gregg, the head of Gateway. They only showed his character on the TV. And I would have really liked to have a few more scenes with him revealing himself as the main bad guy. Based on his lack of screen time, I gave him this award. But Craig does say honorable mention to Diane Baker for the mother, two on the nose with her performance. But that ultimately means that Wendy Gazelle, with two votes, the imposter is going to win the trash can filled with dirt award. She's sad. All right. Well, we have another opportunity to give out another positive award, and this is the Steve James Unsung Hero Award. The award that we give out to the person, the, the non-lead character who just made the movie better by being in it. Maybe even someone you would have rather had the movie been about. Who is your nomination for the Steve James Award? Oh, first before we do that. You know, every place you go, there's always someone who thinks he's a badass, right? Then there are those few who are. Who's one of the few? Are you still kind of a badass karate boy? That's right. Steve James set the bar high. There's few people that are like him. Who was it in this movie? The guy who died in the plane. He was trying to... <laughs> Dale. Dale. He, <laughs> he was trying to get there. He was trying to solve this problem right yeah. off the gate. This is a big deal. This is a thing. And hook up at the same time. You know he was He was trying to. to meet her. You know he was... He goes, oh, we finally get to meet. Yeah. And Dale was going to try. And, I'll be there the whole yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your unsung hero, Brian? Wow. <laughs> Um, I'm going to go with Dennis Miller. Dennis Miller? Yeah. Wow. I want to see this corrupt psychiatrist, like, see his downfall. You're like, I really like this guy. He no. Just, he just I just, watch, it could make for a really interesting you know, story. No, for sure. Uh, I want to go with the internet as my young hero. <laughs> that doesn't seem fair of at all. Movie. I don't think you'd ever let anybody vote for something that's all not right. a real person. Fine, I'll uh, go with Dale. Okay. I've got away with it. I'll go with Dale. What Dale. a consolation prize. <laughs> Okay, Dale, I guess you can have it. Dale can have it. But the internet, man, the internet was chasing after her this whole movie. It, it hacked things that you didn't think were hackable. It really tried to ruin her life, and in the end, couldn't get it done. But I thought the internet gave it a good try. So that's what I think. But ultimately, I'll vote for Dale. Who's your Unsung Hero nomination? I said Dennis Miller. Oh, well. it got two, two tie. Yeah. What, you liked that character? Yeah, I really did. Like. I know he was probably like all trying to, you know, sleep with her, but trying? Yeah. Uh, he already did. He already bought the condoms. <laughs> I don't know. It's just 
they yeah. make a good connection point where they definitely had a relationship. Right. And That's fair. Knowing that they're she's really wanting someone and someone else. And, yeah. yeah. I got you. Respect. JP went also with Dennis Miller. He said, I thought he played his character pretty well and was always a fan of his. That's a third vote for Dennis Miller. Way to go, JP. Nice. Matt Mariner said, dude that blows his brains out at the beginning okay. of the movie. Wow. <laughs> for apparently buying his son a Super Nintendo and a Sega Genesis. Father of the year. Almost. <laughs> almost. <laughs> Father of the couple See the months. Christmas before. <laughs> oh, man. And then Craig Soto also went with Dennis Miller. It was great to have a familiar face on the screen. He brought brevity to the situation while also legitimately being skeptical towards the situation Angela was in. I appreciated that he heard her out and went to his FBI friend, assuming he really did do that. I was a little surprised and sad to see that he actually died. Now, uh, I don't know if he ever actually went to his friend at the FBI. That's a thread that's never resolved within the movie. Right. They did pull the that's same name and right. send in a guy who we assume isn't that guy. No. Right. Right. That very well could have been. I could have been his friend that was just dirty, but I don't yeah. think that was the case. But yeah. He got well, that hacked. means that ultimately Dennis Miller, <laughs> he did get hacked. Everybody is susceptible to the internet. True. Dennis Miller with the unsung hero win. Nice job, DM. And uh, we move on now to our three favorite things. This is where we've got to dig deep, Clint. We've got to come up with three positive things about this movie. If you need 45 minutes to think about this, we can make them go first because I need time. Wow. Also. No, we're good. You're ready to go? Yeah, I'm go. All right. Let's do this. Let's go. Uh, the Cessna was pretty sweet. Yeah. yeah right into those that. smokestacks. That was good stuff. <laughs> like uh, Fortnite. I was like, they're coming yeah. into slappy shores. Right. Whack. Oh. <laughs> too soon. The, uh, you never land on top of the smokestacks. Never land on the smokestacks. Yeah, no. Yeah. Somebody chop them down. Right. You die. You fall For die. exactly zero Fortnite players that listen. Yeah, right. Go ahead. All right. Um, I will go then with her car. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Al Camino's are cool. And then making an appearance back from uh, the my favorite part of Ernest Saves Christmas, the 9234 uh, Chevy Caprice taxi cab making yeah. another huge comeback, helping to move the plot along. That's here. right. Yeah, those, love, that's my favorite all, stuff right there. I love see, the cars. You found three things. I love you like. all the cars. Yes. Uh, anytime you see me, 80s, 90s movies, yeah. I'm looking at the cars, the other cars in the back. I was like, I had one of those. Even Dennis Miller's Beamer? Yeah, I didn't have one of those. No. But, you know, okay. Not that one. No. I've never been a big series. Yeah. But anyway, but, that's cool. But that's all, those are good answers. Ryan? Yeah, those are good answers. Who are your, uh, what are your three favorite things? So I would say uh, Sandra Bullock, definitely. Hmm. Um, I think I know you guys didn't really see it as much, but I thought that the uh, like the way they were able to capture someone feeling social anxiety in a crowded situation, and, yes, and just like the where when she's at the Santa Monica Pier, like I haven't struggled a lot with social anxiety too much, yeah. but I definitely felt like that was you, you could feel kind of overwhelmed watching how they how they were able to capture it on film was yeah. like i thought it was effective um and then just the fact that for me watching it i i felt like i've seen it a hundred times and watching it even last night when i watched it again i was like i still was like very i thought it was very intense okay they did such a good right job on. capturing that that i noticed it here at the table talking about it wow <laughs> i didn't see that when i i'm not very perceptive yeah. my three favorite things there's one the old school computers that mac 94 she was rocking and all that stuff in her house and i mean just even, all three of them all three of them some i know they were fake websites but just seeing the old school internet stuff i always love that uh i love mozart's ghost every time that popped up i was like yes i want it's probably somewhere online you can get a copy to mess around with mozart don't ghost. click the pie icon no don't do that i i didn't have mozart's ghost but i had monty python's <laughs> complete waste of time oh there you which go which i assume was a very similar it was just a yeah. a screw around waste of time interface thing yes it's just like that just doing whatever random yeah. things whatever you clicked on and then sandra bullock was number three i thought she was great i think i will agree with you too i'll go halfway with you i think i think the way she portrayed someone being frazzled and socially anxious and all her life fell apart was great I, the thing i didn't buy is that is that it would actually happen like that you know what i mean it's, it's not that she, her portrayal of it was bad. My my issue was that that situation would be plausible. Does that make sense? So I thought she did a great job at portraying somebody that was coming apart at the seams for sure. 
What are your three favorite things, Lauren? So I found the plot to be super plausible. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> this might, this might happen to me tomorrow. <laughs> um, <laughs> this almost I was happened like, Wednesday. I was totally like on the edge of my seat like yeah. for almost the whole movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and Sandra Bullock, mm-hmm. definitely. like mm-hmm. Love her. Um, oh, good for you. <laughs> you don't like Sandra Bullock, James? I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't see what the big deal. I'm like, she's hot. Uh, yeah. Okay. I she's think she's, I think she's attractive. She's a great, she's a great she's like, actress. She, she was, is. She, yeah. yeah, she's attractive. But she's sitting there on the beach in her full on bikini. I would say as modest as you absolutely could have been in yeah, that scene. Like, sure. legitimately, was like, yeah, she's good looking. Nothing yeah, ugly. I don't about see her. where people go nuts about Sandra. Yeah, that's my. Thing. I don't, she's she's an attractive person. She's yeah a great actress but i wouldn't sit here and go like oh top 10 list sandra bullock number three you know anything like that oh, but well, i would but sorry that's, that's okay for you <laughs> all right that's know? fine is that um is that what you're talking about when you said you guys were getting after the same person yeah <laughs> oh, is that what you <laughs> but meant? i didn't know that until we watched the movie because i was like yeah i think she's like really like she's an attractive woman yeah. you know and ryan's like oh yeah i really think she's hot and i was like whoa oh never knew that. that you did you did because okay. i was like man almost 12 years didn't know that no nope, cool. there you go mm-hmm. now you know and then my last thing, though, yes. is I really enjoyed the boat scene. The boat scene. Yeah. That was intense. Which part of the boat scene? All of it. No, anytime uh, when you get in crashing into the rocks. Yeah, yeah. that was tense. When, I, when she's trying to find the key, she's trying to rifle through, and right. the guy could wake up at any second. Yeah, that was all really It was well intense, done. and it was a really nice boat. Yeah, that boat was awesome, too, for sure. Nice company perk. Right? Yeah. Right. What, did, what did she say she got? I don't remember, but it wasn't near. Calendar one year. A calendar yeah. one year from, <laughs> from her, from Cathedral. Yeah. Uh, JP does drop a uh, Thomas Thomas Technical Achievement Award here. It says, figuring out the future of ordering pizza online with pizza.net. Fun fact, during this time, Pizza Hut had a pilot program at the time for something oh. like this. And the Pizza Net program, which it was actually called, was real but was more crude visually than what appeared in the movie and was only limited to a few places in Santa Cruz at the time. Give, give him crap, James. Tell him it's not possible. It couldn't happen. Uh, you were okay. giving Ryan a whole two, bunch of crap. Two places in Santa Cruz could do it. How could you not know? Could do it. In, How could you not yeah, know? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> JP's three favorite things. Number one, Sandra Bullock in a bikini. Very nice. Uh, number two. <laughs> They really were right about how everything is pretty yes. much online. Yes. Just getting my cap. Ah, uh, uh, that was my leg, not <laughs> your cap. <laughs> Number three. Hey, JP also said Mozart's ghost was one of his three favorite things. I don't know why, but I still crack up every time that pops up and the dude's voice says, Mozart's ghost. Yep. It's good. Uh, Matt Mariner said his three favorite were Bullock, Northam, who was the guy who played Jack, and Ray McKinnon, the guy that died in the airplane, Dale. Bullock is... Bullock is reliable as heck and definitely is great at stressing out with her constant belly aching. She brought it as much as one can in this kind of movie. Jack is a great slimy bastard and chews scenery like an evil gopher. (laughs) 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 It's true. Uh, And McKinnon, well, I just like the character actor. This movie is light on options. Again, I don't like Dennis Miller. So he literally went with the guy that was in there for two minutes over Dennis. Craig Soto's top three said Sandra Bullock. He has a lot to say about Sandra Bullock. I have been a big fan of Sandra Bullock, and I am really glad we had another movie of hers on BMR. I really appreciated her acting and even her character in the movie. Her character, being a QA for a tech company, was intelligent. I I should say Craig is himself a computer programmer. Uh, Being a QA uh, for a tech company was intelligent, a problem solver, and actually capable of defending herself. I appreciated all the ways that Angela was able to get out of the different situations, like giving the cell phone to the homeless guy rerouting all of her web traffic across the world, putting all the pieces together with the corporate sabotage and setting up the virus on the computer at the end. I thought she was believable in the role and did an amazing job. This from a tech guy himself. Yeah, my opinion doesn't matter, but his does. Yeah, I get it. So much more weight. Wow. Uh, (laughs) Number two. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate the nostalgia of the early internet in the movie. It's fun to see all the tech stuff going on to see how far we've come from that time. And number three, Dennis Miller. Enjoyed his character. Looking past being the sleazy psychiatrist, I thought he did a good job. He was just being himself in the movie, and I appreciated it. So, <sighs> I think, I think you're mad that I don't like it. I am. I, I know. I I know you're you like are my best friend. <laughs> Wow. Well, and look, you've betrayed me like this. No I've offense, not but... Be- no, I've no, not betrayed no, no, no. I'm not at all. I wouldn't even consider myself on the list here. Uh, listen. <laughs> I, th- I think it's... You're at the I, table. I think there's a good movie... There's a good movie in there somewhere. 
right? It's like a diamond inside of a piece of coal. Mm. Do you know what right. I'm saying? Well, that's my thing with this movie. There's nothing glaringly terrible to me. Right. But at the same time, it's on the TV. Uh, we're watching it. Me and my wife both watched the thing all the way through. Nobody yeah. got up. Nobody left. We watched it. But there is zero desire to watch it again. There yeah. was no, <gasps> oh, ah, nothing. There was no emotion to me in this movie. I just don't know what it was. But, yeah, it's just. I think exists. I can fix it. You can fix I, this? I can fix the movie. I have a good way to fix this. I think Lauren has a theory on this, too. Perfect. Here's how you fix the movie. And I hope I'm not stealing what your guys are thinking. If, if it's the same as you, jump in. Arnold Schwarzenegger plays the internet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we got these people that are all running around doing the internet spitting, but at the end, in the last reel of the movie, it's revealed who runs the internet. And it's Arnold in a big office with a huge desk and a stoke, and he's like, listen, I am the online world. I am the internet. All right? I and just now see- you will answer to me. His, his head popping out of the monitor like, hi, I see you. <laughs> I know everything. I know you said that you wanted me in that chat room. You said you wanted somebody butch and brilliant and beautiful. Well, when you didn't want me, instead you wanted Jack. I destroyed your whole life. I'm here. Here I am. <laughs> Do me now. Do it. <laughs> I'm just wow. saying, if Arnold was the internet, can you imagine how awesome that would be? I'm thinking, I don't know. <laughs> I'm thinking if he was Jack, Yo, it would have dude. helped out in two specific ways because A, yeah. it would have been Arnold right. in the movie, and That's... it would have been over in 17 minutes. It would have been <laughs> done because he would have killed her on the damn like, boat. He would have picked up the dinghy and just flipped her around. <laughs> Look, she just crashed right over there. I'll just swim over there and snap a neck like a twig. <laughs> No, what does he say in Running Man? I could snap your neck like a chicken's. <laughs> he, would, he would have just swam after her. That's right. Yeah. In his and commando up. gear, yeah. right? When and he's down up, to his, yeah. yo, dude. Turns out he is the dinghy. He's she's, the boat. she's running away with her Nissan, you know, motor, and he's just <laughs> swimming next to it. Hello, I see you. <laughs> You're going to run out of gas eventually. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a theory about this? I do. Okay. So um, I see him being Dennis Miller. <laughs> and like everything what? in the movie that happens up to him like in the hospital so like they they're in there and then he ends up being okay and he like gets out of the hospital bed and like rips off his like hospital gown. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like you tried to kill you me cannot in intimate me yeah pretty much and then he comes out and just starts like smashing computers that's right like I'm going to kill the nets. <laughs> like, they try to innovate him with a garden hose. <laughs> <laughs> it's such... That's what I said. He goes after oh, Gateway. That's right. What are you doing? They shoot him full of penicillin. It doesn't. It does nothing. Aren't you allergic to penicillin? It doesn't matter, right? It's Arnold. <laughs> he just you just right. crap it out of his body or something, you know? Or you just process it and <laughs> lose it. That's all that would happen. I think that that'd be a good one too, as the psychiatrist. Although I couldn't imagine him being taken down. I mean, he'd have to die if he was the psychologist. Well, right? no, it you rewrite the it. Plot. it he the he plot. turns into the savior of the movie, right? right. Oh, god! Like it. he gets out of the hospital right. and he just starts. And they destroying have their relationship, the you know. Oh, and the, okay. Uh, yes, I'm down for that. <laughs> yeah. See, Arnold and Sandra Bullock together. <clears throat> sure. Be interesting. My goodness, that would be incredible. <laughs> be interesting you don't seem sold on it you don't even want don't Arnold in this movie do you no you're like, this movie's too insane. perfect we that's can't have arnold in it at all <laughs> can't have arnold in this movie because it's already good saying. can't not... make something that's a hundred a hundred and one <laughs> that's not what i'm saying i'm saying i don't know if their chemistry would work it would work listen <laughs> my chemistry works with everybody okay. uh Point of fact, <laughs> have you seen uh, uh, Jingle All the Way? Yes. Their you chemistry don't, don't... does not work at all. all right. She Wilson. looks like she's about to throw up. <laughs> she's like, all right, that's good. <laughs> that makes me have questions, serious questions about Rita Wilson. Nothing about Arnold <laughs> at all. Okay. All right. That's fine. Let's give this thing a final rating, guys. Let's put this thing to bed. Uh, I, I have a feeling I could probably guess in advance what every single person is going to say. But I want to, you never know. You never know. I want to hear it from you guys. Clint. Can this just be a movie? <laughs> nope. It's a bad movie then. I yeah. Just, I, really? It doesn't rule. I can't wow. say it's a good movie. It's just a movie, man. Yeah. It's just, 
I don't even think. But it's, would you watch it again? No. Well, I mean, that's kind of gives. You I your wouldn't watch there. it again. I I don't. Yeah, there was zero like upside to watching this movie to me. Yeah. Wow. I'm, oh wow. I'm just gonna wow. jump in right now wow. and just say that I think this is a straight up bad movie. Wow. It, it would have to be if we can't just call yeah. it a movie that's on. Yeah. Just because not that there weren't things about it that were good. Uh, performances that were good. Sandra Bullock was great in it. Uh, I didn't really love Jack. I mean, like I said, he's kind of beta. I I just I get that she was afraid of him, but he had so many chances to kill her. There's no reason, as I said before, for the cat and mouse of the internet chasing her all over God's creation to to try and get her down when they could have just taken care of it. I, there's also a virus can't get into the mainframe from this computer show. I mean, there's just all of that stuff. The, the plausibility of the, the situation. Internet. Instantaneously. Was there internet? Yes. Yeah. Internet was in everything. That's the point, is what I'm saying. Yeah. It was. Right. So it's if so you're on a terminal, your mind, we could send it from to your mainframe. Phone. Then right. Yeah, you could. That's what I'm saying. I think we're saying the same thing. I don't think so. I think you're saying the opposite things <laughs> the same way. I didn't like the movie. I it just okay. it boiled that down part, that. that part, we're saying the same thing. Yeah. I feel like I, I because we did the end of the episode in the middle. I have nothing enough to el- else fine. to say. Go back to the middle of the episode, and you'll hear why I don't like this movie. You just been demoted. Yeah, go ahead from my friendship list. I'm sorry. No, <laughs> top eight. We were talking about MySpace earlier. Yeah, right. I'm just creeping down. He's, he's moved his way down. Perfect. Yeah. All right, Ryan, where are you at on this? I think this is a good movie, straight up. I'm I like I like your just... face. <laughs> I mean, waiting I knew that's what you were going to say, but me. I was just waiting to see no, what you were going to say. Um, because for me, it's interesting that you guys had no reaction to it at all. But for yeah. me, it I definitely responded to this movie as far as like uh, feeling like anxious and like feeling like it was intense. So it's funny that you guys were like, this was so boring. Yeah. And like I had the complete opposite experience watching it. It feels like we didn't even watch the same movie. Mm. So that's it's, it's kind of interesting, but for me, it I think it's I think it's a good movie, straight up. Okay, was your living room on fire when you watched it? <laughs> that's why it was so intense. No, he's got a tiny lion that attacks him every time, every four seconds. It's true, cats attacking me. <laughs> All right, Lauren, where do you land on this one? I thought it was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so you, so you, it's a good movie. It's a good. Movie. A good movie. Yeah, because wow. the whole time, like I was just like looking at Ryan, I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Like oh my gosh! Yeah. All right. It might be me. Wow. I, I, I do think it's interesting that the the numbers seem to be fifty fifty. We're Close, fifty right? fifty yeah. here at yeah. the, ta- at the yeah. table. Uh, right, I don't right. know if we've ever had two straight up good matched with two straight up bads I, before. I think it's. I think it has to do with if if you if it works like if them if the movie generates a yeah. that response of like freaked out like oh my gosh right. like, how is she gonna solve this problem right, right. like. Yeah, I, that, I think that's most of it. I was never worried. Yeah. Right. And if I hadn't been, if I had just been like, okay, then yeah, <laughs> sure. I totally get why you guys feel that way. For sure. I just guess you're dead inside. Yeah. And here's a, here's a, my last point. <laughs> I'm right. sure that's there's this some is the other that. thing that pissed me off. And, and I know I've been joking around about the internet through this whole episode. I'm literally trying to make the movie, to me, more exciting than it actually was. I'm, I'm so annoyed that that... The movie is called The Net, and the internet had nothing to do with this movie. Like, How so? Not it, The movie was more about hacking and virus protection than it had to do with, like, Ghost in the Machine. Well, how do you get about hacked, the though? They're and, just and saying that none I, of that is possible without the internet. I know right. the internet plays a part, but it's, a huge it's part. not like the, the internet itself is the thing that is the danger within this scenario. No, but there is no hacking danger this without the internet. I understand this, that. This also isn't like a horror movie where the net is the villain. It should have been. I know, but you wanted, it, and maybe that's part of the problem. Is you you came into it being like, oh, the yeah. net is going to be the villain, not the villain, but the danger. You know, it I is mean, the, the danger. Well, Someone can she remotely lived her whole life change online, all of your records. Happened. Here's what JP had to say. <laughs> I'm just I'm just done arguing about this. To be honest, uh, JP said this is a bad movie that rules. Uh, there weren't many movies at the time that dealt with the concept of hacking computers and how corporate greed takes it uh, takes it to the online world. Am I going to watch this movie anytime soon? Nope. But I will still think about it at least in the back of my mind. So rules from JP. Uh, Matt Mariner said, I think this is a bad movie that rules. I don't. I know it doesn't sound like it from my tone in my previous awards, but it's a great time capsule of when the internet was still fun and mysterious, has plenty of try-hard charm, and was a bit prophetic when it predicted ordering pizza on the web. Side note, 
where's the VH1 behind the music on Mozart's Ghost, the hottest band on the internet? Come on, guys. We need it. Or <laughs> VH1 behind the music? No. No. Oh, guys, this is a great show. Doctor are your age. So we've got too good, <laughs> too bad, two, two rules. rules. What's the last well, one? Which those are basically 50-50s yeah. of their own. Craig Soto will break the tie. This was a bit tough for me to decide on whether this movie was good or not. I chose this movie specifically because I had never seen it before. Being a computer programmer and being intact, I felt like there's a number of movies like this that are required of us nerds. Movies like War Games, Swordfish, Hackers, etc. All way better than this. <laughs> Uh, are just movies we have to watch, even if they're bad. I was surprised in watching this movie how much I enjoyed it, but I also think I'm biased because I'm a big fan of Sandra Bullock. I loved her role, and I thought she was believable in the movie. I thought the movie had decent writing, even though some of the points it wasn't at its best. At some points in the movie, I felt like it almost was a made-for-TV movie. I love the tech nostalgia, like seeing checking in on your flight online, ordering a pizza, FedEx tracking, working from home, chat rooms meeting people at IRL, having all of your information and data online. I felt like this movie was ahead of its time because of all those implications I feel are even more true now. With all that said, I was torn between a bad movie that rules and good movie, and I'm going to say this is a straight-up good movie. So it's actually kind of surprising that more people thought it was good. I, yeah. I was fully anticipating, just based off Rotten Tomatoes, I was yeah. anticipating well, 44, that being Lauren... Yeah, no. I thought me and Lauren were going to be the only ones who liked it. No, so Craig is in there with you. So we got ultimately three right. goods, two bads, two bad movie that rules. Right. Huh. But like, if you look at that even, it's like... It's all mixed. I, I think also, too, James and I both aren't like, it's the worst movie. Right. It's just a bad no. movie. It's just not great. Um, it just so didn't like, do anything for me. It's, it's above not, 0%. No. Didn't to elicit a response. Right. right. Um, exactly. It's below 60%. Right. <laughs> Exactly. So pretty much here's yeah I mean you guys? three out of seven people said it was a good movie so even that's right probably right about where the where the numbers say it should be right yeah yeah so I think we got to move on from the net and say I don't know uh, uh, I don't know why it just did nothing to me for me anything but I I respect your guys opinions that you loved it and anybody else out there that likes it Clint does not respect no. your opinions you don't have to respect our opinions I no. I don't have to I. Yes, I have to respect your opinion. <laughs> Just don't I don't have to agree, have to agree with, with you, with you yeah. but I, I respect your opinion for sure. It comes from a. I don't think you know. I'll allow you to have it. <laughs> <laughs> you can have it. Oh, yeah, so. good for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. All right, so I'm going to wear that out. That's my new favorite button. Now that we've done Terminator Salvation, well, let's let's move on though. Let's talk about next week. Next week we've got um, we're going back to the '80s. I feel like we haven't been in the '80s. Well, we just did Once Bitten, but and Evil Dead too. So never mind. What the heck am I talking about? All right, we're going back to the '80s, 1984, for a movie about break dancing, yeah. starring. Shooter McGavin, I think, is the only actor that's in it that I'm aware of. The guy that played Shooter McGavin, it's not even his real name, from Happy Gilmore is in it. Uh, and looking at the cast list, some other people that I don't recognize. But I'm excited for Breakin' 1984, the precursor to Breaking 2 Electric Boogaloo, which uh, <laughs> we'll eventually get to do as yeah, well. But not. we're talking about breakdancing, guys, something that we know a ton about. You think I'm out of my element wow. like this week with internet stuff? I'm going to be trying to break down... A breakdancing movie next next week? He does a spin and grabs his heel. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be great fun. I'm wow. excited about it. One of my I earliest memories of James Hauser was him actually standing on top of the tire fort singing, uh, I believe it was uh, Pump Up the Jam or something. Pump kind Up of the Jam. <laughs> dancing Pump on top up. of the big tire fort That's right. on the playground. Nice. That's right, man. Fifth grade. It's not quite uh, break dancing, but no. that's as close as we got. But the, I've got the music <laughs> in me, Clint. Yeah, that's that's what that means. <laughs> got rhythm. Yeah. No, I didn't have that. Thank you guys for listening. <laughs> you know, if you've enjoyed the show, we've got other shows like Good Movies Rule, The Horror Reel, On the House, three other podcasts you can get on our Patreon. It's patreoncom slash Rule. You can get access to all of those at different levels. Plus, you can vote on upcoming episodes. You can give your awards, just like JP and Matt and Craig did today. It's all on patreon.com slash bad movies rule. You can see the link in the show notes below as well. We just want to say thank you to everybody that listened. Thank you to Clint Bush for coming in here and talking about a movie that, that oh, I meant to ask you, Kelly was in the room. Yep. Did she like it? She, same thing. Like, oh, eh, all right. There. there you go. Yeah. There's the movie. Ryan and Lauren, I'm glad we got a chance to talk about your favorite movie. So this is <laughs> great that you're Not in my here favorite movie. Talking about that. 
We appreciate you both for being in here. I'm James Hauser. On behalf of everybody, have a wonderful night. We'll, we'll see you guys on the next one. Well, who would have thought that a little movie from 1995 about, not about the internet, <laughs> would ruin our friendship? I'm not mad at them <laughs> because they like the movie. I'm mad at them about the movies that they say are trash, but they like this movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's Thank you for verbalizing that. Look, right? Do you see how you feel about me not liking Last Starfighter? Yeah. And then how I, how I would feel about you not liking this movie, right? So you kind of put those two on the same Objectively, level. Objectively, Last Starfighter is so much worse than this movie. Objectively, yes, but yeah. it has a yeah. feeling. But it definitely, yeah. Does yes. it though? Yes. No. It's just nostalgia because you saw it winning. when you were. It's the kid winning the world. Mm. It's not good though. No, oh, yeah, it's great. Pure cheese. Yes. Not cheese is good. awesome. No. We're in Wisconsin. It's, it's the bad kind of cheese <laughs> with mold all over it though.